and Bethune Cookman from Orlando, Florida. It's the annual Florida Classic, the 67th meeting of all time between these two schools. Coming up next. you to ESPN College Football in the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's. From the Florida Citrus Bowl here in Orlando, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Florida A&M Rattlers. These two teams out of the MEAC in FCS College Football and Bethune-Cookman already locking up the number one spot and a trip to the playoffs coming up for them. Florida A&M at four and three in conference play, four and six overall, but as they always say, throw out the records when this game is played. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Orlando and the Florida Classic. Good to have you with us. Mike Corey alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, and it's always a big one, Jay, and how about what Bethune-Cookman has done this season on their way to the playoffs, second time in the last three years. Yeah, head coach Brian James Jenkins has the Wildcats playing football at an exceptionally high level, and they've been doing that all season long. They're the number one ranked team in black college football. They've clinched a playoff spot, and this year the Wildcats just don't want to participate in the postseason. They expect to win some games in postseason play. So many different players. You're going to see three different quarterbacks potentially here today. A solid running back in Isadora Jackson and also Eddie Poole, a wide receiver. Those are just two of the very special guys they have. Yeah, this is a Wildcat offense that's predicated off the run. They rush for over 250 yards per game. And the moment you start crowding the line of scrimmage trying to stop Jackson, they hit you with Eddie Poole, their deep threat receiver, the senior transfer from Rutgers University. Florida a and they have dealt with a lot of adversity this year. Lost their head coach a week and a half ago former NFL player and Earl Holmes is now the acting head coach and they won their last game in his first game last weekend. Yeah, what Coach Holmes has tried to do is bring some stability and energize the Rattlers again and fortunately for Earl Holmes he's got probably the best quarterback in the MEAC conference and Damian Fleming just a sophomore he's got a strong arm NFL size NFL potential he's got a special talent there in Tallahassee. And so looking forward to seeing what he can do here this afternoon from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. And here's the series history between the two. 67th meeting, as we said this afternoon, and the teams have split the last 10 meetings. Bethune Cookman with a 10-point win last year, Jack. The Bethune came in two years ago heavily favored and were upset by the Rattlers. Coach Jenkins had the troops get, take care of business last year, and they expect to come out intense and ready to play today. Moss on the return for Bethune Cookman, Jazz Moss, and Vasty Paul on the tackle for Florida AM. And we are underway here this afternoon in the Florida Classic. And we're looking to see who the quarterback is going to be, Jay, because that was the talk all week. Who is it going to be? Quentin Williams, Broderick Waters, Jackie Wilson. It's going to be Quentin Williams to start. Yeah, they, they use quarterback by committee, but I really do believe that the sophomore Quentin Williams has started to solidify his role as a starting quarterback for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats for not only this season, but for seasons to come. Williams on the first play. It's a handoff. And it's Adronicus Lovett, the senior from Gainesville, Florida, for a couple on the first play. Here's what the offense looks like for Bethune-Cookman. There's Jackson and Lovett, who just carried Eddie Poole, who we talked about. K.J. Stroud, another solid wide receiver, and Jordan Murphy at the tight end. Hackney Brown, Solomon McCoy, and Monroe up front for the Wildcats. Second down at 11. They lost a yard on that first play. And once again, back to the ground and nothing doing. Florida A&M defense stacking up Isidore Jackson on that second carry, third and long coming up, Jack. Yeah, great job by Patrick Scott there. You know Bethune-Cookman wants to control the line of scrimmage, so it's going to come down to how are they able to push around this three-man defensive line for Florida A&M on that previous play. Great individual effort by Patrick Scott, the senior from Tallahassee. In the slot is David Blackwell, closest to the line of scrimmage at the top of your screen, or closest to the offensive line, a four wide receiver set on third down and 13. Williams, a pressure, gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. 
intended for Rodney Scott. And major pressure coming up the middle by the Florida A&M defense. Yeah, defensive coordinator and head coach Earl Holmes being aggressive, dialing up the blitz on the previous two plays. This time, they don't get to the quarterback, but they pressure him just enough where he misses high with the pass to force the incompletion. And that was Devin Roberts coming on strong, a strong safety for Florida A&M in the face of Williams. And it's punt time. Here's Corey Kowalski in fourth and 13. And a fair catch at the 42-yard line by Marvin Ross. So just underway this afternoon in the Florida Classic between these two, Jay, as we take a look at the quarterback for Florida a and That's Damian Fleming, who you talked about. What else do you like about his play and what he's done this year? What he's added this year to his arsenal is the ability to run the football a little bit more. Last year, strictly a pocket passer, didn't run a lot. Now he's extending the plays with his legs and still has that accuracy that you would like in a quarterback. First and 10 at the 42. Four wide receivers set. Fleming with time, guns it, and he's got his man in midfield and a fumble. You're right, and the third Cookman after Dwayne Harvey caught it. Let's see. Jarkivas Fields for Bethune Cookman there on the head, and does he have it? The catch was made by Dwayne Harvey. No, oh, it's going to stay with Florida A&M. Very fortunate to get this football back. You see Fleming does a good job on the read, hits the wide receiver in the second hole, and this ball just gets yanked out as he was going to the ground. The Rattlers are very fortunate to come away with that football. That was Jarkivas Fields and also Dawood Lang. You see the turnover story this season for Bethune Cookman. What a job they have done. 19 interceptions and a plus 18 of the turnover margin. Supposed to be in the tops at FCS College Football. And a first down down to the 40-yard line by Lenworth Lennon, the wide receiver, the sophomore. He's the leading receiver now two years in a row for the Rattlers, Jay, and has him in Bethune-Cookman territory. He's a good one to go along with Travis Harvey. Those are some of their best playmakers, Fleming's favorite targets. Four wide and first and ten at the 40. Fleming rolls, passes caught. He's got Edmondson Felix, and he's inside the 30 for another first down, down to the 27. As DeWood Lang on the tackle. Here's the offense for Florida AM. Rocker and Lockett when to see the two backs in the backfield. Harvey and Lennon, who just made the catch earlier. Michael Etheridge at tight end. We'll split some time with Michael Morris. The offensive line, Hartley, Hartley along with Savory, Almadaris, House, and Hall. And here's Fleming at first and ten at Florida AM, and that is going to be ruled incomplete. I think they're going to give him credit for the catch there. It seems like the ground well, caused, caused the fumble, the fumble yeah, there. They will call the catch. You're right. And this is Travis Harvey, who they like to isolate on the slot and get the best individual matchup they can. Great patience by Fleming. And as he's going down, the knee was down before the ball popped out. Dancing an inside hand up. And the Rattlers moving the football here pretty darn well. Eddie Rocker on the carry. And inside of the 15-yard line, first down and 10 for Florida A&M. And this is a great start for Florida A&M. One of the Achilles heels for Bethune-Cookman this season has been they get off the slow start. You've got to capitalize, and it looks like the Rattlers are trying to make them pay. Fleming. Plenty of time. Floats it to the end zone. Flag is down. And you can see it right there as Dwayne Harvey was saying, hey, where's the flag I'm being held? And Bethune-Cookman's defender there and Tim Burke Looks like he may be called for the interference. And what a what a privilege it is to have a quarterback like Damian Fleming there. You see the flatlers are coming out, throwing the football. Defense number 21 because the foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball replaced at the two-yard line. First down. When you've got Fleming, you know he's going to make the right decision with the football. And on this one here, he could have chosen to run the football, but he thought he had a guy. He could get it in that window, and the pass interference was clear. And now the Rattlers have the ball inside the five-yard line. Rockers in the backfield to the left of Fleming from the two. It's first and goal they give to him. And he's going to be stood up. The defensive play that time by Delwood Lang on the tackle for Bethune-Cookman. Lane... 
Barnaby, the senior from East Orange, New Jersey, Mr. Energy, as they call him for Bethune Cookman, and potentially an NFL prospect as well. Yeah, he's got great size, 6'2, 225 pounds. The coaches say he's going to run 4 5 in the 40 yard dash all day, every day. That's NFL speed and size. Lane, a transfer from Rutgers. Now with 53 tackles on the season, tied the third of the team. And from the two, it's second and goal. Rocker again, Eddie Rocker, and being pulled back from behind. But his jersey, and Harold Love the third, big number 99 there, helping in the middle of the mix. Well, this is not going to be an easy yard for Florida A&M to get. The strength of this Bethune-Cookman defense is that defensive front four they've got with LeBrandon Richardson and big Harold Love at 330 pounds right there in the middle of your screen. Tevin Tony, you can't push those guys around. They're deep, they're athletic, and they just don't get moved. Now with three backs on third and goal from the two. Rocker, and he will not get there again. So you're right on it, Jay. The tackle that time by LeBrandon Richardson, who you just mentioned is going to be fourth down. Yeah, they've got speed there. Richardson, number 50, unblocked. He does it, but great job by Wood Lane coming across the formation to make the initial contact on Rocker in the backfield, and then LeBrandon Richardson there to finish off the job. So three straight plays from the two-yard line. And that's been the Achilles heel for Florida and they can move the football, but they can't score touchdowns unless they throw it. They only have 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. That's not a good clip. Here's the kick from Chase Varnador, and it is good. And you're right about that. Last week, they won the ball game at North Carolina Central, but it was thanks to Varnador. He was 5 for 5 for field goals. 3-0, Florida a &M. We'll be back. Florida AM on top 3 0, thanks to the field goal by Chase Varnador to start things off in the 67th annual Florida Classic between these two. And there's the head coach of Florida, the acting head coach for Florida AM, Earl Holmes, now in his fifth season, Jay, as the defensive coordinator and is the acting head coach. Yeah, and, and one of the greatest football players in Florida AM history, one of the best linebackers the school's ever produced, 10 year NFL veteran from Tallahassee, Florida. Went to school at College of Tallahassee, Florida. Now he's coaching there. He's trying to right the ship, but although they've got the lead, you've got to be disappointed to only be up three to zero when you had the ball first and goal from the two-yard line. Well, it's what happened last week for them. Varnador was five for five for field goals, but they were all from like within 30 yards in. So it's exactly what you're talking about. On the return, here's Jazz Moss again for Bethune Cookman and tripped up early at the 18-yard line. It'll be up close to the 20, and that's where the Wildcats will start once again. And here's the defense for Florida A&M. 3-4-4, and Brandon Davis, Patrick Scott, and Ellie Hippolyte. The linebackers with Jackson Hepburn. We'll be seeing him a lot today. Dupree in Denmark. And Ross and Johnson on the corners. Roberts and Pillow, the safeties. And these guys get all over the field and create turnovers. Yeah, they, they've got a tradition of playing that cover two coverage with safeties that can fly. And Marvin Ross playing exceptionally well from the cornerback position. Empty backfield. Five wide receivers on first and ten at the 20 for Bethune Cookman. Williams. Over the middle, caught Eddie Poole. Poole to the 29 yard line. Picks up nine yards on a first down pass play. And, and that's the adjustment that Bethune Cookman's doing. They realize Florida AM is going to crowd the box in the early parts of this football game to stop the running game. So now they're going to ask Quinn Williams to make a couple passes, complete some throws to loosen up the lanes to run the football. Isidore Jackson comes in as the running back now. Second and one for the Wildcats. Jackson, first down to the 33. Puts up four yards. And it's Jonathan Pillow on the tackle for FAMU. And that's them. You know they're going to run the football. So they'll give you the, uh, the look of a pass formation, but that's just to throw you off guard. The bread and butter for this Wildcat offense is running the football. And Ike Jackson's the main guy that gets it done. And they line up in this pass formation. Look out right here for him. K.J. Stroud formation. They like to get him the ball when he lines up in that slot position. In motion, Williams finds Stroud. He's got it across the 40. And K.J. Stroud, the senior from Brooklyn, New York, the transfer from Rutgers, and a leading receiver on this team. And that's what they like to do. Get, line them up in the slot so they give you the threat of having Eddie Poole and K.J. Stroud close to each other, move him across the formation, then drag him back underneath. 
KJ Stroud really emerged this year. Took him a season to get adjusted, but now he's playing very good football for the Wildcats. So some of the offensive numbers by Bethune Cookman. It's been special this year for them. Converting almost 50% of the time on third down. That's huge. Right now, just second and one. Eight men around the line of scrimmage for Florida AM. And slipping down is Jackson, Ike Jackson, as they call him. But 97 yards and a touchdown last week. In the win. It was Bethune Cookman is eight and two on the season. It's a first down run. Just got enough. Seven and oh in the MEAC. Already the champions of the MEAC, Jay, and heading to the playoffs for the second time in three years. Yeah, and this is a team that can win in the postseason because they run the football so well and their defense is so firm. They believe that offensively is going to be the challenge. Can you run the football in postseason play? Yards are a little bit tougher to come by. You've got to be able to throw the ball efficiently if you want to be victorious. Three receivers, Williams, pressure. Williams, fumble. Sounds, loses the football, fumble. Florida a and they're all over it. I would not be surprised if we saw a review, a video review. Keep in mind, the MEAC conference is the only conference in FCS football that allows instant replay during the regular season for their televised games. And I'm sure Coach Jenkins is probably going to try and take a look at this one. Is the knee down? No, it was not. Brandon Davis on the fumble recovery for Florida A&M. Wow. Couple of early turnovers by Bethune Cookman. Florida A&M back on offense when we come back. CBO. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Welcome back to the Florida Citrus Bowl and the Florida Classic between Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. The Rattlers forcing a couple of fumbles, one turnover by Bethune-Cookman. They just lost the second fumble. Now Florida A&M back on offense, Jim. And I wouldn't be surprised. They try to bait them up and take a deep shot here. You're absolutely right. Play action. Damian Fleming is going to keep it and slips down at the 36-yard line, just a gain of one as Harold Love the third on the tackle for the Wildcats. And that's why you like having a quarterback like Damian Fleming. You try and take the deep shot that's not there. The kid simply just doesn't throw interceptions. He's got 15 touchdowns, only four interceptions on the year. He makes good decisions with the football. A play there where a younger quarterback or a less experienced quarterback would have just thrown the ball up for grabs. He had the patience to say, it's not there, let me run the football. Now James Owens is in the backfield. They give it to him and Owens on his first carry of the afternoon. Gets close to the 32-yard line. Jarkidis Fields on the tackle for Bethune-Cookman. And five yards shy of a first down. You talk about that after that turnover, that sudden change type of play when you try to beat them and go deep and catch them off guard. Defense not expecting to be back on that early. Yeah, and a great job by defensive coordinator Yogi Jones for Bethune-Cookman anticipating that would be the case, playing soft zone coverage having the secondary remain deep and not allow anything to get by him. Third down and five, Florida a and The bunch formation and four wide receivers. Fleming, incomplete, and Dawood Lane was the one closest there that time for Bethune-Cookman. And I think you go for it here. I think you got the turnover. It's too long for a field goal attempt. Four down territory. You try and gain some momentum because you want to try and beat down Bethune Cookman a little bit further, kick them while they're down. Don't play with this dangerous rushing attack for them. Wow. No, I guess not, Jen. They're going to punt it away. Brandon Holdren is on. I was going to say for Varnador, his longest of the season is 46. This would have been almost a 50 yard. Yeah, and if you punt it here and it goes into the end zone for a touchback, your net gain is 12 yards. 12 yards, yeah. I, I disagree with this one here. I think this would be a time where you would actually go for it, but we're in the booth and he's down on the field. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Give him a little bit more room so the decision was made, mine was made up there. You gotta have points. You gotta have points to beat Bethune Cookman, you know? You, you definitely, <laughs> it's just a matter of time before yeah. they wake up. They are a second half football team. Once they figure out what you're doing to them offensively, your plan of attack, they make changes and it becomes almost impossible to score on them. Patrick Harris is back to return and he'll let it go. 
Good kick. Yeah, they're going to be inside the 10 yard line at the six. Bethune Cookman, they fumbled twice. They've lost one. Now they're starting at their own six when we return. That paper. Florida Classic, Florida a and on top, 3-0 early in the first. Tonight on ABC, Oregon's path to the national title game in South Florida continues against Stanford. The Cardinal are still in contention for the Pac-12 championship at a Rose Bowl berth. Saturday night football presented by Windows 8. Number 13, Stanford, and second-ranked Oregon tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Quack, quack. Quack attack taking yeah, on the right. Cardinal. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Can Stanford slow down the pace of the football game? Nobody else has been able to do that so far this year. Bethune Cookman from the six yard line. And a keeper by Williams at QB. Had him fooled, and he's across the 30, heading down the sideline. Williams on the cutback. It's a Florida AM territory at the 44 yard line. Quinton Williams. And this is just a great job of recognizing you read off the end of man the line of scrimmage. They're going to do the option, the dive. He pulls it, calls his own number, and then finds a crease. He gets outside. He's got an entourage in front of him. Rodney Scott, number 22. And that's just a great decision by Quentin Williams to pull the football, call his own number, and reward it with a big game. Finally, Brandon Denmark was back there to bring him down for Florida AM. and That's a 51-yard run that time by Williams to the 43. Five wide. Williams passes a little bit low, and they'll say it is caught by Eddie Poole, so he has the reception just inside the 40, picks up about four yards. Yeah, and what a difference that makes there. I mean, Florida AM had him backed up, they had the football, they didn't. See the throw here. Poole loses his footing, but still able to secure the football. One of the reasons why Quentin Williams emerged as the starting quarterback as the season went on, he's the best passer of the three quarterbacks on the roster. Former Mr. Football in the state of Florida. They've been waiting for him to arrive, and it looks like he has. Williams comes in again. Pool, another catch. First down inside the 30, and Eddie Pool, look out. Started to do some early damage. Joshua Smith on the tackle. And this is a great play selection here, what you're going to get here. All you're going to get is a flare route here. Pool's going to come and find the second window. The option part of the route is either to the right or left part of the screen. Second window wide open. That's like stealing, taking candy from a baby. And Bethune Cookman right back to work. Right? Williams in trouble. He's going to be sacked. Flag is down as well. Ellie Hippolyte on the sack, but a flag is down. And a hold on the Wildcats. Oh. Offense, number 55. That film is the car. Second down. That's it. Good. The decline of that penalty. I know you normally don't like to take sacks off the board. Uh, in this case, I would actually accept the penalty because it's yeah. about field goal range. You know, you're giving them right now an opportunity. They pick up five or six yards. They can go for the field goal. If they were moved back another 10 yards, it'd be very tough. Coach Brian Jenkins in his third season for Bethune Cookman playoffs in his first year in 2010. Last year, eight and three. This year, eight and two. So it's been a great start, 26 and seven in three seasons as Bethune Cookman's head coach. Right there, the trademark of Brian Jenkins' intensity. Mm -hmm. Very intense young man, young coach, but his team feeds off his intensity. And we've seen games before where he's got that spark himself, almost like a baseball. Almost like a baseball player manager getting kicked out the game. He knows how to fire up his team and. You gotta wonder, is he questioning the spot of where the sack occurred? They're reviewing the play. Yep. With 4.51 to go in the first, Florida AM on top, 3 0. It's gonna be second and 18. That's if they. Here's what happened. Here's the sack. I mean, just penetration is gonna come. And I think the question is, where does he go down? That could be the only thing I could see them trying to review. And it looks like he's down. That's somewhere around the 34-yard line. First down markers at the 16. So, yeah, it'd be second down and 18. And they've got the ball down there on the 34-yard line as well. So probably a little bit of confusion right there. But 
I would not be surprised at all if Jenkins was using this as a method to fire up his team. I'm telling you, I've never seen a team in college football that feeds off the pulse of the head coach more than this Bethune-Cookman Wildcat team. That's it. Yep. Well, they so had the wrong down. They had the wrong down marker. Yeah. I mean, it was first down. They previously right. gotten that. So it was first down. And then the, the sack occurs. I mean, that, that's where the ball spotted. So, so you've got to wonder, you know, what is the review about? I wonder. Now, I did think I heard an official on the field say third down. He, he announced that when it should be second down. Right. They're taking the sack. Yeah, it's, they'll figure it out. Bethune Cookman, you're right, though, about Jenkins trying to get his team fired up a little bit. They've fumbled the ball twice already. They're favored, obviously, in this ball game. They're undefeated in the MEAC. They're probably, you know, that's that's a great point. Yeah. Guys, this game, totally different. Doesn't matter what kind of year each team is having. Yeah, he realized it's a rivalry football game. They talked about that in the press conferences and the lunch they had yesterday. And keep in mind, the last time they played on this field was at the beginning of the year in the MEAC SWAT Challenge. They took on Alabama State. They they were down 21 nothing to start the game and came back and put a curtain on the Hornets. There's Bethune Cookman. Just over 3,500 the enrollment. The Tona Beach and Larry Little, Hall of Fame lineman for the Dolphins. Part of that perfect season uh, when they won the Super Bowl. He's been around here enjoying the festivities and the atmosphere of this Florida Classic. What a wonderful atmosphere it is. Probably one of the best tailgates you're going to find. That's right. In terms of the way that food smells. It took us a little while to weave through traffic to get here today. It, it, it is. And it's the pageantry. <laughs> they do a really good job down here at this game. And it's almost like a state holiday down here in Florida. Everybody comes to Orlando for this third weekend in November. It's about the fanfare, the pride, the bragging rights between these two. And the 67th meeting of all time as it's five and five in the last 10 years. It's the orange and green. The city's painted orange and green or maroon and gold. We were talking about intense rivalry. Covered this game a couple years ago, and I had some folks upset with me because I wore an orange tie. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know what? I got the red shirt on here today. I don't know. I mean, that's not. They'll give you a pass. Close, yeah. Yeah, it's a little too, yeah. close, too close for comfort. <laughs> we're under review here right now as it's. 3-0 Florida A&M with 4.51 left in the first. It was a sack on Quinton Williams, the quarterback for Bethune Cook, but it's going to be second down and 18 that they're trying to sort it all out. Second down from the 34-yard line. The clock will start with a ready for play. Well, his mic wasn't working here, so the fans couldn't hear, but reading his lips, he said it'll be second down on the 34-yard line, so. And so here we go. Second down, 18, five wide, Bethune Cookman from the 34. It's Poole and Preston Quickly at the top of your screen, wide receivers right there. Uh, bump and run, man to man coverage across the board. Look for the matchup, trying to get the ball to Eddie Poole. Oh, wow. And now Bethune Cookman calls timeout. Timeout. <laughs> time didn't they have enough time? I mean, the, the play clock, I'm sure, out, but I mean, yeah. it was like it's a 30-second timeout. It's had about five minutes right there. Well, they're trying to get the one-on-one -on -one matchup and get the play called, and they didn't have a chance. Let's take a look back last year. This was November 19th here in Orlando, and the second quarter was Anthony Jordan at a four-yard touchdown run for Bethune Cookman, and Jonathan Moments a 43-yard touchdown run for the Wildcats. And Anthony Jordan's six-yard touchdown run in the third quarter, and Bethune Cookman wins it by 10. That says it all right there, doesn't it? I mean, that last pose by Jenkins tells you the magnitude. He had not won a Florida Classic. He had lost his first Florida Classic. Last year was the first time winning one, and he wants to see if he can get put together back-to-back -to -back winning Florida Classic. And that win enabled Bethune Cookman to share a runner-up spot in the league last year in the MEAC. And now it's kind of flipped. Bethune Cookman 8-2, 7-0 in the MEAC. Florida and m trying to break that perfect mark as the handoff goes to Rodney Scott. It's inside the 30, still well shy of the first down, third down on the way. 
And this is a big down right here for Florida A&M. You want to stop Bethune Cookman, not allow them to pick up the first down, but also you want to right now. Bethune Cookman will be happy picking up five yards to make it a little bit easier field goal attempt. Williams on third down on the rollout. Pressure gets rid of it. Flag down, catch made right at the first down marker by Jomo Gordon. And it's going to be close. We'll check the flag. He's right at the 16 where the marker is at. The spot will be close, and the penalty flag will be one as well. You wonder, did he push off to get that separation? Daryl Davis, our referee today, very busy early. So the signal that it'll be holding. So in that case, that's automatic first down. So it won't, they won't have to rely upon the spot of the football. Holding defense number five. 10 yard penalty, first down. So the penetration comes, what a great job by Williams, getting his shoulders around, making that throw. Didn't see the holding, the holding must have occurred Correction. before the end of the, the play. The separation, but the result of the play right there, he grabbed the a little down. bit of jersey on the interior receiver. The result of the play, Jay, is a first down. So they'll take the play. Penalty is declined. It's at the 16, and it's first down and 10 for the food company. I'm surprised at how much man-to-man -man coverage you're seeing Florida A&M play. Everybody's up close to the line of scrimmage, trying to play bump and run coverage. Scott in the backfield. Ronnie Scott gets the call. Pushing forward inside the 15, close to the 11. They will bring up second down. Let's take a look back now at how Bethune Cookman is doing in the red zone. Brought to you by Verizon. Well, you see that they lead the MEAC conference, 28 touchdowns on 41 attempts in here. And that number would be a little higher, but keep in mind they've got a field goal kicker that's missed half of his kicks. He's 6 of 12 on the season. And Jay's had three of them blocked. So it tells you they're an efficient offense. They can move the ball. They can score a touchdown, which is what you like in an offense. We see the difference. Florida A&M struggled a little bit. But through and cooking, when they get the ball in the red zone, they normally punch it in for a score. Second down and six. Williams option. He'll keep it. Quinton Williams inside the five. Head down and to the three. A tough run by the sophomore from Tampa. And this is just a great read. They're doing the option off the in man the line of scrimmage. Right there, decides to call his own number, which was the right decision. Takes a shot at the end of this run. Becomes a little bit of a quarterback sandwich. But Quinn Williams showing that he's in command of the offense, and he's got the Wildcats on the move. Patrick Aiken on the tackle for Florida A&M. First and goal from the three. You know, this is a difference between what we saw with Florida A&M. They struggled and could not punch the ball in, in the same situation. Bethune Cookman, because they rely on the run and they know how to run the football, these are normally pretty easy for them to do by putting touchdowns on the board. David Allen is in, and Andronicus love it, and Williams slips and is going to lose a yard as he tried to go option to the far side. Had Lovett and Allen in on that set. A yeah, surprise here. You'd like to think with the lead fullback blocker out there, pitch that football, allow your running back to make a move, and of course, Jenkins got that look like that's exactly what we did not want to do was lose yards down in the red zone. A little frustrated on the slow start. And here's the handoff to David Allen. Allen is going to be shy of the touchdown. Third down and goal on the way from the one yard line. David Allen is the junior from Winter Haven, Florida. No rushes last week, just his 14th on the season. And I will tell you, Coach Jenkins is thinking this is two down territory here. Mm -hmm. He will not settle for three points in this situation. The backs remain Lovett and Allen. Williams in the shotgun. Fade pass. Caught. Poole. Touchdown. Eddie Poole on a score. And Bethune Cookman leads at 6 3. Well, they call him Steady Eddie. Six foot three. And you saw the vertical jump there with the good hands to go along with it. 
Sven Hurd's extra point is good, and Bethune Cookman has the advantage now with 109 to go in the first quarter. Well, we talked about the man to man coverage, and this is the matchup right here. You're going to see Poole over here, number three, and this is just a jump ball. Great job putting air underneath it. Poole locates the football, secures it, keeps it away from the defensive back. That's a good touch there by Quinn Williams. That's where that ball has to be placed. You see Poole go up and catch it with his hands, strong hands, and that's what they like. How disappointing is this for Florida and them as we're coming with about a minute left to go in the first quarter. They had the tremendous opportunities to be winning this football game. They only had three points with great field position. Now they're down 7-3. Well, think about it, Jay. Bethune Cookman just traveled 94 yards for that touchdown. They started at the six after the punt by Florida AM, and which you thought you know, they probably should have went for it. You know, they were at the 32-yard line. They chose, it took a delay of game penalty. They punted a great punt down to the six, but Bethune Cookman goes 94 four yards for the touchdown and then also go back to when coach Jenkins made the challenge to fire up his team and they responded by putting a touchdown on the board and seizing the lead in this contest for the first time James Owens is back to return with Devin Roberts for Florida and m to receive this kick Liner off the turf and on the return, Owens across the 25 up to the 27 yard line. And that's where Florida and will take over down seven to three. Sunday night on ESPN, BCS Countdown presented by Tostitos. Tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. That time of year wins, it's about style points. You can't just beat somebody, right. ask Oregon. They beat somebody and they drop. They said no more of that. They started putting the hammer on folks. Can't lay off the gas pedal, that's for sure. First and 10, Florida and from the 27-yard line, and a run for a couple up to the 30-yard line by Eddie Rocket. And there's the scoring drive for Bethune Cookman. Look at that, Jay. 11 plays, 94 yards. It took 5-11 off the clock. Well, that's impressive. And Williams with the big touchdown throw, but also on the first play of that drive, the 49-yard scamper to really get them out of their own end zone and get them on the drive. And this. The Phil Cook and Wildcat football team is playing football at a very high level. Four wide, play fake. Pass caught, but no game there. What a play by Delwood Lang on the catch with Travis Harvey. And Lane has just been all over the place so far, the linebacker for Platoon Cookman. Yeah, that's Wood. You know, they call him Wood. He brought the Wood to Harvey on that play there. And right now, if you're Florida a you've got to be very careful. This game can get away from you in a hurry. Defensively, it seems as if Bethune Cookman has made the adjustments to the Florida AM attack. And now they're starting to punish the ball carriers wherever they may be. And they won't get the playoff. That's the end of the first quarter. It'll be third down and eight for Florida AM when we come back in the start of the second quarter. And the 67th meeting between Bethune Cookman and Florida AM in the Florida Classic from Orlando. <laughs> The Mid-Eastern, only at GoToMeeting.com. ESPN College Football Primetime, number one Kansas State. Welcome back to ESPN College Football and the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's. As we get set for the second quarter, Mike Corey and former NFL quarterback Jay Walker going to have you with us for this one. Always a party here in Orlando. You know right? what that is they're doing, right? That's what probably the world's largest wobble <laughs> party right there. Dance called the wobble. They had the cheerleaders from both teams. On the field, so you uh, with a little some dance know. moves early. Yeah, I don't wobble, but I boogie. Okay, third down, Florida and in to start the second quarter. Big play, pass caught, and it's a first down. What a catch by Emerson Felix. And right now, if you're Florida a &M, put the ball in Damian Fleming's hands and allow him just to make plays. I mean, he's going to buy time. We talked about the mobility. That's pocket presence. Knowing where he is in the pocket, you see the receiver come across the formation. Great job by Damian Fleming. I think if you're Florida a &M, you need to allow him to be a running game, and he'll also take care of your passing as well. Put the ball in his hands every play and let him make decisions. Felix, a former walk-on after a 14-yard reception, first down at 10 at the 42, and on the ground for a few that time is James Owens. And this is a good job by Lawrence Kershaw, I believe. What they've added is the intermediate passing game. For Florida a and everything was either deep downfield or thrown behind the line of scrimmage. 
Now you're starting to see them utilize 10, 15 yard passing patterns. Jay, we got a flag down here late. On Florida AM. and Illegal block below the waist. Uh, number 27 of the offense. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. We've got Linworth Lennon there from the wide receiver position blocking below the waist or probably was a chop block. That's one of the things you, you don't want to have. But see, now you got to turn a negative into a positive. You know, first and 20 is never good. But when you've got a quarterback like Fleming, give him three plays to get your 20 yards. That's what you tell your quarterback. We've got three plays to get 20 yards. We don't need it all back in one throw. Fleming's been so steady this season for FAMU. It is first and 20. And on the ground it goes. Well, it's been a combination of that guy, Eddie Rocker, along with James Owens today. For the Rattlers on the ground. And Gets up close to the 40 yard line. Jarkivis Fields on the tackle. And, and Rocker's a good one. Uh, he's a really good running back. But I just think with Bethune Cookman, what you've got to do, you've got to challenge him. I mean, yes, they intercept a number of balls, probably more than anybody else in the country. But your quarterback doesn't throw picks. Use that to your advantage. And the offensive line has been doing a great job. Fleming has not been sacked. Let him throw it. Bethune Cookman defensively. We'll put you in harm's way, as you said, 19 picks, also 14 fumble recoveries. This pass caught just across the 42 to the 43 yard line. And uh, Dwayne Harvey on the reception and as Jarkivis Fields again, another tackle for Bethune Cookman. Going to be third down and nine coming up. You know, and what makes a good quarterback is the ability to stand in the pocket when you know you're going to get hit. On that previous play, protection broke down. Fleming still hit his receiver in stride to give the offense a chance to pick up yardage. I like his composure, really impressed. He showed his pocket presence today. He showed mobility and game management skills. Four wide receivers now for Florida and m on third down and nine. Pull in for blocking. They'll dump it to him. Pull on the catch. Needs to get to the third cup of territory. It's going to be well shy of that from the 45 yard line. Brought down by Harold Love, the third. Fourth and seven. Rattlers will punt. Now what you're starting to see now is Bethune Cookman controlling the line of scrimmage. Harold Love was starting to call his number a lot. Then you've got LeBrandon Richardson and Wood Lane's been all over the field. When you can make the pocket protection break down. That's not a good sign for Florida A&M. Pardon me, Rocker on the catch there, who was the running back in for protection. They dumped it to him, but only picked up a couple. So here comes the punt team on now for Florida A&M. Brandon Poulter. And the food Cookman on the return. Here comes Patrick Harris. Harris. And to the 34. Flag is down. Timeout. Media. Well, instead, we've got a timeout. We'll be back. First down and 10 for Bethune Cookman when we return on top 7 to 3. Bethune Cookman has won six in a row. They're looking for their first undefeated season in the MEAC since 1984. And on top right now, 7 to 3 over Ford AM. And back on offense are the Wildcats, Jack. Yeah, and this is where Bethune takes over. You know you want to run the football. They've got the lead. You're going to see a heavy dose of power running right now from the Wildcats. And they got three backs back there. And it goes on the ground of Rodney Scott. And Scott will be dropped for no gain right at the line of scrimmage, the 34 yard line. Brandon Denmark on the tackle for Florida AM. And, and that's what, as an offensive coordinator, you know Florida AM's going to load the box. They had eight men around the line of scrimmage. VCU didn't care. They're still going to challenge you with the threat of that running game at all times. Five wide and second down and 10. And the man covered by Florida AM across the board. Pool on a catch. Should he drop it? No, incomplete. 
An incomplete looking for Eddie Poole. They've gone to him a lot. He has the touchdown in this ball game as well. And that's going to be the matchup. If they see one on one coverage and they're going to go find Eddie Poole. And here, ball thrown just a little bit high, but actually, defensive back might have got a hand on that ball as Poole was trying to bring it in close to his body. Marvin Ross was defending on the play. Third down and 10 from the 34. Williams and Ronnie's going to be tripped up. Just a couple on the play. And Ellie Hippolyte again on the tackle for Florida AM defensively. Fourth down. And BCU got away from their trademark of running the football right now, eating some clock, giving them the lead. Instead, give credit to the Rattlers doing a good job of playing pass defense coverage and getting the sack. So Corey Kowalski will punt this one away. Marvin Ross back to return, fair catch at the 25. Acting head coach Earl Holmes for Florida A&M and the Rattlers getting ready to get back on offense when we return. Bethune Cookman on top, seven to three, early second quarter. There is the acting head coach for Florida A&M, Earl Holmes, and also the defensive coordinator as well. Here's what he did in the NFL. The Hitman. That yeah. was his nickname when he played. They called him the Hitman Earl Holmes, middle linebacker. You know, you play 10 years at middle linebacker in the NFL. Uh, you better be able to hit somebody. And he's one of the young rising stars in the coaching profession. Pass incomplete on first down. And as the game goes on, you know what we've seen more and more of? Number 13 in white. The Wood Lane is playing phenomenal from the outside linebacker position there. Won't get credit for a tack uh, tackle on that last play. Won't show up. But because he got so close to Fleming, he altered the throw, forcing Fleming to float that ball a little bit high. He's been very active thus far in this football game. A lot of energy for Lane. Second down and 10 pass. Caught and on the far side, Travis Harvey. He's going to be shy of the first down, run out just across the 30 by Dion Hanks. And I like the play selection here. Make this a shootout. Mm -hmm. If you're Florida AM, you want to make it a shootout. You haven't had that ability all season long, but at this point in the year, use your best weapon, which is your quarterback, Damian Fleming. Fleming guns it to the side and. and I'm not a fan of that call. I mean, you're you're basically when you call that pass there, you're taking the ball away from Fleming, you're taking away the decision, you're throwing the ball behind line of scrimmage, and you're relying on the blocker. Let him stay in control of this football game and throw the football. Lenworth Lennon on the catch and shy of the first down, so fourth down in the yard. Yeah. That's a good shot right there in the orange glass. It's Quinn Gray, played quarterback at Florida AM. Now he's the quarterback coach. Played for the Jacksonville Jaguars for a number of years and they're trying to open up the playbook. When you talk to the coach, they say, we're going to open it up. We got a good one. Work in progress. Holdren on the punt, Patrick Harris. And a fair catch for Bethune Cookman at the 33. Second quarter with 9.25 to go here in this Florida Classic with Bethune Cookman and Florida AM. And here's what's happening around college football today. Wow, and what, look at that. I think the one that stands out, Georgia Southern and that triple option, mm -hmm. giving Georgia all they can handle down there between the hedges and you look at Florida State and Maryland for the back injury but now Bethune Cookman back on offense from the 33 how about the FAMU defense and what they've done so far in this ball game yeah, for some reason or another Bethune Cookman's gotten away from doing what they like to do which is run the football give credit to the Rattlers but now here come the Wildcats Jackson on the run for a first down up to the 48 yard line for Bethune Cookman. Patrick Aiken on the tackle for Florida AM. and m And offensive coordinator Jim Pry realizing, hey, let's establish control of the line of scrimmage again. Run the football. That's what we do at Bethune Cookman University. And I expect to see more of the power running game for the Wildcats. This is where they start to will their force on you and start pounding out rushing yards. And the slot at the top is Cleckley, Blackwell. And the slot to the bottom of your screen. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. And Jackson looking for the holes. He got hit initially a yard or two behind the line of scrimmage and will lose a couple. Brandon Denmark 
The outside linebacker there, number eight, has had a pretty good game so far. They're coming from his outside linebacker position. They're just playing zone gap, and you're going to see Denmark stay at home and make the tackle there, following the football, even though the play was going away from him. He stayed at home and was able to make the tackle. Mike Jackson still in it, running back for two wide now on each side. Second and 12. Williams, flag down. Florida and m jump pass incomplete for Eddie Poole. And you can tell that Williams knew he had a free play there. Offside, defense, number 26, five-yard penalty, second down. And the most, one of the most heavily penalized teams in the MEAC conference is Bethune-Cookman, not Florida A&M, but thus far, Bethune-Cookman been penalty-free. And the Rattlers have hurt themselves with penalties. We talked to Coach Brian Jenkins about that this week and said, well, the guys play aggressive. You know, that's what they preach. So he'll, he's okay with that, he said. Yeah, I mean, they need to work on it, particularly when you start talking about postseason play. I mean, penalties will kill you in the postseason. They'll end your season. And he's aware of that, and he said they consistently work on it, but he's not willing to trade aggression for the fear of a penalty. Williams trying to set up a screen to K.J. Stroud, incomplete in Florida and m smelled it out. Stroud took a wow. shot. Wow. I mean, he took a major shot there. That play never had any timing going from the offset. There were wide receivers, a little bit of confusion. And we're going to see sniffed out and what a hit put on Stroud by Brandon Hepburn, mm -hmm. inside linebacker, the best linebacker on this Rattler football team. Stroud is headed to the sideline. And there's Hepburn, who's Graduated already with chemistry degree, and he's got some NFL talent. That's 6'4", 235. Look at that. Rated number 24 inside linebacker. Yeah, he's got an opportunity to play on Sundays, and like the fact that he gets it done in the classroom as well as on the football field. Coach Holmes had nothing but good things to say about Hepburn all week long leading up to this one. His number one talent defensively. And third down now. Williams hit. He just got it away. It's going to be fourth down. And the defense for Florida and m Brandon Denmark again in the face of Clinton Williams. Then Denmark just applying the pressure, and he's been doing that on several occasions. Florida and m plays a 3-4 defense, but they're putting him as a down lineman to attack the edge, and Williams does a great job of just getting rid of that football. He's an injured player down for Bethune Cookman. It's Rashard Brown. That's the left guard. The junior from Kissimmee, Florida. And this is the last thing you want to see if you're Bethune Cookman. You never want to see a football player get hurt on the field, but when you're preparing for postseason play, you cannot afford to have your offensive lineman go down. Hope this is something minor, but I know this is the one thing Jenkins did not want to see. Now, Coach Jenkins talked about it. He said they're going all out today, Jay. I mean, you asked him multiple times. Well, you know, you got to rest some of the starters. No, I'm not. You know, we're we're unleashing all the bullets in our gun today. Okay. Well, hey, what happens if you're up by 20, 25? You're gonna no. We're gonna go right <laughs> at it. You know, here's the football championship subdivision playoff format. 20 teams in the tournament. 10 automatic qualifiers. Bethune Cookman, one of them, with the MEAC championship 10 at large but and that show and you'll be on that tomorrow talking about where teams are going yeah everybody's going to kind of be relying off the words that come off of my lips and match stick tomorrow I'm getting calls from coaches all over the country i do not have a vote i just want you to know i don't get to select i just tell you who's in and who's out just passing on the information and i pass on the yeah. information but it'll be a good one and this is fcs i mean they do it right you've got yeah. you've got playoff spots that are on the line with today's contest I mean, a huge matchup in the OVC, whether or not Tennessee State can beat Tennessee Martin and be the second HBCU to participate this year. The Lehigh's having a great year, but they lost to Colgate, so now they're going to need some help. They're not going to get the automatic bid, and that does not look good for Rashard Brown. Well, and, and, you know, one of the reasons why I asked Coach Jenkins about, you know, if you get up, it was two years ago when they lost to Florida A&M. They lost the game, and they also lost their quarterback. MEAC Offensive Player of the Year, Matt, Jink, Matt Johnson, who's currently the quarterback coach for Bethune-Cookman, he was injured, out for the year. They lost the next week in the playoffs. 
because they couldn't score any points and he was dominating. So you've got to wonder at a certain point when you secure this game, you have to take off the players, I believe. Yeah, that was in 2010. Marvin Ross is going to let it bounce. Oh, what a buffoon Cookman bounce. It takes, it'll stay. And continue to roll and go back. <laughs> to the ball. It bounced at the one, <laughs> and they're going to end up down in it at the three. From the one to the ten and back down to the three. Good punt that time by Corey Kowalski. 46 yards, and we've got a timeout. 7.35, midway through the second quarter of play in the annual Florida Classic. Bethune Cookman by four. Rather than go to the pawn shop and pawn your... Midway through the second in the Florida Classic from Orlando, Bethune Cookman and Florida AM. Monday Night Football continues on here. And the Rattlers now deep in their own territory at the three yard line to start this drive. First down and 10. And the handoff up the middle to Eddie Rocker. And Rocker with some breathing room across the 10 yard line and a couple yards shy of the first down. And just what Florida AM needed, Jay, as he shoots right up the hole. The great job getting a body on a body and winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Double team on the inside, then you see the lead block by the fullback, Lonnie Lockett, fantastic. Rocker sets it up, gives him a little bit more breathing room. Lockett goes out now, they set up four wide receivers and second down at two. First down run, Rocker up close to the 20-yard line. And LeBrandon Richardson on the tackle for Bethune Cookman. So two good runs there by the senior from Ocala, Florida, the leading rusher for the Rattlers. And a good job by the Rattlers of responding to the challenge, being pinned in their own five-yard line. Two plays, they pick up the first down, eat up a little clock, and now they've got a fresh set of down. James Owens comes in now for Rocker as he heads to the sideline with 32 yards and eight carries so far today. And we'll give it to Owens. Owens spinning and being brought down at the 23 yard line by Raheem Knight for Bethune Cookman. Raheem Knight, good job making the tackle coming from that nose tackle position. But once again, Wood Lane was there to make the initial contact between 13 and 93. That was a one two punch there, but really impressed with the way Lane's been all over the football field. He's a guy I would key on. When I break the huddles of quarterback, I'm looking to see where is he lining up right now. They've got him lined up at the inside linebacker position. Down to six minutes in the second quarter. Fleming's pass caught on the far side, and that's a first down up to the 30-yard line, and a solid reception that time by the tight end, Michael Etheridge. First catch of the afternoon. This is the composure as a quarterback. How do you react under pressure in the pocket? Watch him wait. He's waiting. Come on, wait, wait. Gets hit. Still delivers a catchable football. That's quarterback in 101 right there by Damian Fleming. You could teach quarterback 101 there, right, for him? I mean, hey. Uh, I, I can get you all the way up to, <laughs> to, you know, 202 and 303 if you need to. At the highest level, son. We're seeing some good play by him today. Another pass over the middle. It's caught for another first down. Travis Harvey. Look at the strength and the accuracy so far today from Fleming. Good arm strength, and he's getting hit, and he doesn't mind. And this is what you want. The offensive line, you've got to protect them. He's going to hold on to the ball, deep drop. And still throws a nice strong ball there. Accuracy is the key, and decision making has been phenomenal. Fleming starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm here now. They go back down to the ground, and Rocker back in, fumbles the football, recovered by Florida AM. First down at the Bethune Cookman 41 yard line. It's been two fumbles today by Bethune Cookman, they've lost one. and. And why were they able to run the football? Because Bethune Cookman realized that Fleming was starting to heat up. Ball was down on the turf, and fortunately, they were able to recover that fumble. That's Adamson Felix doing a good job recovering that fumble. Going to say the first fumble today by Florida AM, yeah. but they do get it back. So we've seen three fumbles today. Yeah, but don't fall in love with the run. You got a quarterback that's throwing darts right now. Let him keep throwing it, and you just use the run to keep him honest. But I keep the ball in Damian Fleming's hands because he's on fire. Yeah, it took the words right out of my mouth, Jay. I was going to say, you're right. Defensively, now they're kind of on their heels. Bethune Cookman. Oh, they'll go back down to the ground. This time it's Owens. James Owens with a hole. Still his feet. 
James Owens for the touchdown. This is what rivalries are all about. Throw the records out the window. Interstate rivalries tend to bring out the best in both teams, and the Rattlers responded, and they're back in the lead. What a run by Owens for his fifth touchdown of the season on the ground. Chase Varnador for the extra point, and it is 10 to 7, Florida and F. Hey, all set up by the passing arm of Damian Fleming, but when you find a crease and you've got some speed and it's a rivalry game, you don't go down with just one tackler. You do what it takes to take it to the house. The Rattlers getting it done there. James Owen, good touchdown run, young man. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Calm. The rivalry continues. Florida AM now on top 10 to 7 over Bethune Cookman here late in this first half. Look at the scoring drive. They go 97 yards, Jack. Yeah, great job. And Owens capped it off with that 41 yard scamper, but they got, they were backed up. They used Fleming to throw the football, and then they were able to run it in. And that's a surprising stat. Florida AM out rushing Bethune Cookman so far in the football game and who would have thought we'd have seen two 90 yard drives yeah. in the course of one half of football well bethune cookman has a 94 yard drive for a touchdown and then florida a m says well we could top that let's go 97 for the td this is jazz moss on the return for bethune cookman and moss gets upended at the 32 yard line and now a little skirmish going on flags are thrown It's yeah. Nolan Norton there for Florida a and His helmet's off. And now you're starting to see the rivalry. Mm -hmm. That's what you want in the rivalry. Temple start to flare a little bit, getting a little chippy. Florida a and showing they're not going to lay down. They got the lead. Standing up to Bethune-Cookman. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 45 on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So they call that on Martin Embry the third for Bethune Cookman as they were holding down Norton there. Yeah, look at him on the right side of your screen. They're just the plays over. The They've got a helmet on him. Look at that. He's trying to get up. He grabs a leg and well, yeah, then that's, it pushes him right there without a helmet on. He's very lucky he didn't get ejected. I was gonna say that was Tory game. Price right there, 33, just pushed yep. his helmet off. And what do we talk about the penalties? When will they show up? You know, if you're taking on a team that's very good in the postseason and you get backed up, you lose half the distance to your goal line, and they're going to try and make you pay. They've got to get a grasp of those penalties there, particularly on plays like that when it's all mental. Double tight end set for Bethune Cookman from their own 17-yard line after the penalty. I was Florida A&M. I blitz them right now. Do a run blitz. Ronnie Scott is in. He gets the call. Scott pushing forward across the 20 to the 21. Will pick up four yards. Wow, they, they dialed it up just right. He just missed the tackle. They brought the run blitz, bringing the free safety. You're going to see the free safety shoot the gap right here. Just doesn't wrap up and make the tackle. Come in there. That's Devin Roberts. Missed him in the backfield. And then Scott was able to pick up some yards after the first missed tackle. Williams. For Eddie Poole, another reception. is right at the first down marker. See if he has enough for the first down. It's the combination of Marvin Ross and Michael Ducree on the tackle for Florida a and It is a first down. And you can tell the respect that Eddie Poole's getting from the Rattler defense. Plenty of cushion. Not playing too much bump and run coverage on him anymore. They've gone away from that plan. First and ten. Two wide to the top of your screen, and Rodney Scott on the ground. For just one. Let's not forget that a series ago, Jay Rashard Brown, the left guard, went out with an injury. 
And Jasu Joseph is in now, the true freshman for Bethune Cookman. Good look at Patrick Scott. Anytime you run a 3 4 defense, you have to have great nose tackle play. And there's a reason why Bethune hasn't been able to run the ball up the middle because Scott has been occupying two linemen on every single down. Lined up right there. And he stands right above the center. They're going to send two people to block him. It's his job just to hold firm and not lose ground. That's Patrick Scott, the senior from Tallahassee at 305. But a pitch out to Romney Scott. Herbert yeah. Thune Cup went flag down, gets up to the 35 yard no flag, pardon me. Yeah. How is there not a flag? Yeah, that was one of the clearest one. <laughs> block in the backs I've seen on the pitch. That enabled the running back to pick up all the yardage. It's going to be shy of the first down. Four yards here coming up for third down. No call, no flag. Third and four, Bethune Cookman, 35 yard line. Two minutes to go, first half. Dump off to Ike Jackson on the catch. And Isidore Jackson down the sideline for Bethune Cookman, first down and more. Yeah, great play call there. Good ball. Handling skill shown by Quentin Williams from the quarterback position. Gussell the misdirection to the right, slip screen to the left, blocker in front, way to seal, and then it's all Jackson after that. So Isidore Jackson, the junior rushes down to the 35 yard line of Florida AM and and Bethune Cookman trying to get the lead back or perhaps a tie before halftime. Now he's got flags down. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, first down. And that's Joseph, who is in for Rashad Brown, who's hurt at the left guard spot. Bringing in the backup, and sometimes they get a little antsy, not used to the voice of the quarterback on a regular basis. Normally they're practicing with the backup quarterback instead of Williams, who's the starter. Haven't seen a change of quarterback today, Jay, for Bethune Cookman. Quentin Williams has been in all game so far, and he keeps it on the ground for just a couple. And a tackle by Brandon Denmark again for Florida AM. Two timeouts left for Bethune Cookman. Florida AM with all three of theirs in just 42 seconds in second first half. I mean, I'm surprised you let this much time. Too much time. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I mean, yes, you do have two timeouts, but you don't have that much time. Why let so many? It's almost 20 seconds. They watch tick off the clock before they snap the ball. Wow, no sense of urgency here by Bethune Cookman from the 37 yard line. They just wasted valuable time. Williams now with pressure, dumps it off Jackson. Jackson head down inside the 35 yard line. Oh, now wow. flags are down. What a poor job by Florida wow. and them. They're going to bail him out, Jay, because hit out of bounds for no reason at all. Brandon Denmark with four seconds left, going to put them in field goal range and a chance to tie it up. Late hit out of bounds, number eight, 15 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, they're not going to like him. Actually, Williams should not go to Jackson with the football. You're going to see the crossing man, right? Well, look how open he is right there. They don't cover him. He decides to give the ball to Jackson, and then at the end of the play, you're going to see the one hit. Jackson's out of bounds on the white. They yeah. hit him clearly when he was on the white, out of bounds, and now give him some more yardage, and they're in field goal range. After poor, poor clock management by the Wildcats, they're going to have an opportunity to tie up this game going into halftime. The ball is at the 19 yard line. It's going to end up being a 36 yard field goal attempt here for Sven Hurd. On the season, he's 6 of 12, a long of 42. He's had three of them blocked, and they get four as Hurd's field goal attempt blocked by the Rattlers. And that's going to end the first half of play. More 
flags down. Hold the phone. First half in the books, but let's figure out what the call is as Florida A&M is going to take a 10 to 7 lead into the locker room at halftime. To talk about intense. Crowds into it now, Jay. They are, and the players are into it as well. It's getting very chippy down there. We're going to have to get an explanation from the official on what the penalty is. They're letting them leave the field, so obviously it's nothing regarding the field goal attempt. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 85 of the two. That penalty will be enforced to start the third period. Come out. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, the Marching Wildcats, today's scores, first half stats and highlights all coming up after the break on the State Farm Halftime Report, so stay tuned for that. Florida a and and Bethune-Cookman, the Florida Classic, first half ends on a block by the Rattlers. They lead it by three at the break. Welcome to the State Farm Halftime Report for the Florida Classic here in Orlando and known as the Pride, the Marching Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. Enjoy it as we are at halftime between Bethune-Cookman and Florida a and <laughs>
The marching Wildcats of Bethune Cookman here at halftime of the Florida Classic. Florida and M on top by three at the break. More of the State Farm halftime report in Orlando right after this. Have you gotten one of these in the mail lately? This halftime report is presented by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And we're back here on the State Farm Halftime Report. Bethune Cookman and Florida AM in the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's. There's been a lot of upheaval at the top spot in major college football. Gene Wojciechowski has more in what has been a crazy season. Who's number one? Who knows? And we all know the reason Alabama isn't number one anymore. Here's more on the story of the growing legend that's building in College Station. I once saw Johnny after scoring a touchdown at What an amazing freshman year for Johnny Manziel and College Station. We'll be back with stats and highlights from the first half when we return on the State Farm Halftime Report. Classic from Orlando, Charlie Wilson performing as Florida and m leads Bethune Cookman at the break 10 to 7. That's Uncle Charlie Wilson. <laughs> I got a ways to go to catch up, man. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what an interest by Charlie Wilson. Came in dressed as a member of the Bethune Cookman Wildcat Band, took off the clothes, and then gave you the performance. Turned it out here at the Florida Classic. Well, he's getting ready for the second half. It should be an exciting one. There's no doubt about it. Mike Corey and former NFL quarterback Jay Walker back here at the Citrus Bowl. And it's Florida A&M on top by three. Very surprising. Yeah, they hit, they took advantage of turnovers earlier. Bethune Cookman being resilient like they are. The defense started making some big plays, but the Rattlers responded, grabbing the lead. Poor clock management by Bethune Cookman to end the first half, but that's what rivalries are all about. Florida A&M shouldn't be in this game, but they've got the lead at halftime. All right, Jay, to the highlights we go. Here's what we saw in the first half, and I tell you, it's a pretty exciting and long drives, too. Oh, very long drive. You see here, Eddie Poole goes up, makes a touchdown grab for the one-yard reception, showing the athleticism, and then it was a matter of just great run by James Owen. Individual effort got in the secondary, refused to go down. That capped off a 97-yard drive by the Rattlers. End of the half, Bethune Cookman, field goal, blocked. 
That's what it is, and that's something they've got to work on. Low trajectory on that field goal try. If the game were to come down to a field goal, if I'm Bethune Cookman, I would be very nervous. Here's your first half stats, and the yardage pretty much kind of the same right there. I mean, both teams with long, sustained drives. One turnover by Bethune Cookman. They had two fumbles. They lost one. Florida a and had a fumble, but they got it back. And yeah, I tell you, Bethune Cookman going 94 yards down the field for a touchdown, and Florida a and tops them. They go 97 yards down the field for their yeah. touchdown. Yeah, it's surprising in that stats. Bethune Cookman rushes for 250 yards per game. They're being outrushed by Florida A&M, who has 99 yards at halftime. Can they continue to run the football? That's the story of the second half. All right, let's take a look at some of those scores from around college football today, the top 25, and what else is happening around the country. And South Carolina on top, and Michigan up, up by seven over Delaware State. It's a shootout there. Coach Harrell doing a fantastic job on Howard, as well as Kermit Blunt at Delaware State. They both had great seasons. Right, we're looking forward to the start of the second half here between Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. It's a close one. There's no doubt about it. It's a three-point ball game. Go ahead, Uncle Charlie. It's in this Florida Classic here from Orlando, Florida. This halftime report is presented by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Welcome back to ESPN College Football in the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's. Halftime as Charlie Wilson performs here at the Citrus Bowl as Florida A&M leads Bethune Cookman by three at the break. as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Let's see how Florida A&M can get to a better state. Brought to you by State Farm, Jay Walker. They're winning this football game, but I think the key is going to be give me more Damian Fleming. He's shown the ability to manage a game, to pick apart the secondary of Bethune Cookman. Yes, they've got a great secondary, but it seems like Florida A&M got a better quarterback. Allow him to control the outcome of this football game. He's been making great decisions with it thus far. He's poor, he's constantly collected. If I'm Florida a and I want to get to a better state. I want to put the ball in the hands of number seven as many times as possible. Well, he did on that last drive. We saw it. He made a bunch of those decisions and was capped by the Owens touchdown run of 41 yards. So Fleming just only two incompletions so far in that first half. Not bad. But playing in control, managing the game with the right situation. And that's what you want from your quarterback. And just think, he hasn't completed the ball yet downfield over 14 yards, but they're still winning with the intermediate passing game. Fans are joining here today. Just take a look at the Bethune Cookman playmakers of this first half. And the guys that we featured at the start of the telecast, what do you think about their performance so far? Yeah, I think we're going to see a heavy dose of Isidore Jackson in the second half. They're going to run the football. They've got to establish that. And Eddie Poole, He's shown that he's a matchup problem for the secondary Florida A&M. He's got five catches, 33 yards, including a touchdown. He's going to be the guy they go to when they throw it. Bethune-Cookman trying to win seven in a row, looking for their first undefeated season in the MEAC since 1984. They have locked up the title of the conference, however, and they are heading to the playoffs. They just don't know where or when yet. And that'll be decided tomorrow afternoon as you'll be on that FCS selection show, getting ready to see where the 20 teams in the nation will play for the title. Yeah, number of teams right now in battles trying to get into the postseason. And when you talk, talk about the FCS playoff, you get 20 teams get in, 10 winners of conferences that get automatic qualifiers get in. So the MEAC is one of those 10 conferences that has an automatic qualifier. Bethune-Cookman has won it, so they will be in. And then the 10 at large. 
Now the question is going to be how many teams from the CAA will get in. Mm -hmm. Some years they've gotten five teams in. This year, I don't think they'll get five in. Some good at-large teams out there as well, but we'll let everybody know the results. Check out yours truly, Jay Walker, along with Matt Stick, tomorrow, 1.30 on ESPNU. And that's the second playoff berth for Bethune-Cookman and head coach Brian Jenkins in three years. So they went in 2010, they lost in New Hampshire. Last year, didn't make it in, but they were eight and three. Yeah, that was a tough one there. One of those losses came to the University of Miami. So that's been one from there, but we'll see how it goes. How do you like the uniform for Bethune-Cookman? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, this is one of multiple uniforms that they have right this season, correct? Yeah, and they've got new helmets as well. So they were talking about this. This is the fourth helmet they've unveiled during Jenkins' three years there. So they're trying to say that they're the organ of HBCU football. Yeah. I like him. They changed it up, you know. And he doesn't have any, uh, you know, any fear with that. Any, like, thinking, okay, we got to stick with one thing because it's yeah. been working. Now let's just keep changing it up. Yeah, and they, they started out the pregame warm-up with black helmets and then went in and changed and came out in the white helmets. And he actually, one thing I like about it, he gives the players input on what the uniform design looks like. All right, so here's what's happened. There was a penalty at the end of the first half, a 15-yard penalty, so the kickoff from the 20 by Bethune-Cookman, and it is just driving Florida a and all the way back to the six-yard line. And it's Owens on the return. He's going to get up to the 20. Oh, what a make great it the 21. Kick. So what a kick, you know, to go through that after being backed up 15. Yeah, that was a good one. The wind is blowing from left to right. And he actually got up underneath that one with the driver. Let the wind carry it. And they actually worked out very well for Bethune Cookman. Good look there at the flag, how it's blowing. He caught the jet stream on that kickoff. Yeah, he did. That was a 75-yard kick. <laughs> that time. In the air. In the air. <laughs> all exactly. What is it saying? Golf all carry. With a 15-yard return by Owens, it sets up first down at 10 for Florida a and to start the second half from the 21-yard line. And on the ground, it is Eddie Rocker for a few as Harold Love the third on the tackle for Bethune-Cookman. It's very interesting. I, I, I understand you want to run the football, but I think you got to unleash the playbook. You know, offensive coordinator Lawrence Kershaw done a good job thus far. They've got the lead, but I want touches by Rocker, but I want more throws from Damian Fleming. James Owen is in, is in and he gets the call on this play here on second down and is going to be shy of the first down. Stood up at the 29 yard line, two yards shy, and leading the charge is Ten and Tony for Bethune Cookman. And keep in mind this Bethune Cookman defense only allows 130 yards rushing per game, so you really have to give credit to Florida AM for rushing for almost 100 yards in the first half. Will that continue? I doubt it, but they've got it going so far. There's the total yards, 105 to 88 for Florida A&M so far in this ball game. It's gonna be third down and two for the Rattlers at the 29. Four wide receivers. Fleming, pressure, yeah, wow. set that was a mugging. flag down. Yeah, there's gonna be a mugging in the secondary by Bethune-Cookman. Reason Fleming, Fleming didn't throw that ball, they set up a, a hitch and go route, and the defensive back who's hurt now in the play, Tim Burke, just grabbed the wide receiver, wouldn't allow him to get a release. Defense, number 21, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, results in the first down. You know, there you go, the sack by LeBrandon Richardson and also Anthony Woodard, but. Yeah, and this is doing the double move here, and it's going to be at the very top of your screen. It's going to be over here. Watch this. They're going to set up the pump and go. That's the hitch, and you'll see the end part. You missed the move, but then you're going to see <laughs> both the defenders are right. down, the receiver and the receive, and the defender are down on the ground because Burke just grabbed him, realizing he was beat. That's defensive holding. First down, Florida A&M. So finds a great sack there by Bethune Cookman, and now from the 39-yard line, ball on the turf and covered up. Damian Fleming, sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, recruited by Vanderbilt, ends up here at Florida A&M. Yeah, he signed with Vanderbilt out of high school, but then when they made the coaching change, James Franklin came in, new staff, and Fleming decided he didn't want to go to Vanderbilt anymore, and what a fine 
for Florida A&M. Getting the quarterback of his caliber, highly recruited out of high school, and he's been a diamond in the rough, shining down in Tallahassee. Second down and ten for Fleming as he guns it. And it's caught in midfield. First down. The reception by Edmondson Felix. We, we do a number of college football games. Rarely do we see this throw. You know, 15 yard comeback. You got to have a lot of arm strength, steps into the throw, delivers a strike. That's almost indefensible. This is what you like to see. That's the arm strength. Look at that rocket. Get to him in a hurry, right on the numbers. You don't see too many college football quarterbacks throwing deep out routes anymore. Yeah, and Fleming is just a sophomore. He's throwing forward 2,000 yards passing this season for Florida and m And in the food cookman territory, they go back to the ground. Into the 43-yard line, a six-yard run again, and that time Rocker keeps it going for them. So this is what I'm talking about. Bethune Cookman, they're going to make adjustments. 60 touchdowns, 60 points total in the second half for the whole year. They've already played 10 games. You're talking about they give up six points in yeah, the and, second half all year on average. And Jay, last week they gave up their first second half touchdown since September. They beat some good teams. Ask South Carolina State how good they are in the second half. Ask Alabama State how good they are in the second half. Now James Owens back in, has the carry, is inside the 40, close to the first down, about a yard shy as Jerome Culp on the tackle for Bethune-Cookman. And now Florida A&M, you, know, you have a lead. They've got a good mix of passing and running going right now and really kind of keeping Bethune-Cookman defensively on their heels a little bit. Yeah, they're doing a good job of mixing up the play selection. I think that's been the surprise. But if I'm Florida A&M, I'm acting like I'm down by seven because when the Wildcats get it going, they've gained momentum. You've got to score some touchdowns to really try and bury this team if you want to have a chance of victory. Third down hasn't been their strong suit so far today. One for five. They only need a yard, though. High formation set. And I don't think no. they're going to get it. No. Jordan Stanley, who took the carry and perhaps will lose a half a yard. And now decision time here, Jay. They were at the 32 earlier today, and they punted it. <laughs> Now they're at the 40. Yeah, and that's why you've got to think they've got to punt it here. I mean, if you punt it at the 32 in that type of game, now when you get the ball and you're back at almost the 40-yard line, you got to think they're going to punt it away again. But I would think you got to throw records out. you got to go for it. You, a victory's not going to be handed to you. You've got to go take it. And you can tell there's displeasure here by the FAMU fans. Maybe, and you know, Coach Holmes, he's a defensive coordinator, and I will say he's not unlike most head coaches that are D coordinators. They tend to play a little bit more conservative, close to the chest, and allow the defense to win the football game with the trust in them. Well, and he has good reason to really today, you know, trusting the defense the way they play, which has been stellar. They've only given up seven points, but this is what you talked about earlier, the fear of this, is that you barely even push them back as the punt from Brandon Holdren Goes out of wow. bounds and they're going to spot it at the 25 yard line. So basically, they pushed them back about 14 and a half yards. Bethune Cookman takes over down by three when we return. At Bethune Cookman University. ESPN. Florida AM 10, Bethune Cookman 7. Let's take a look at today's Bringing the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's. Start bringing the flavor brought to you by McDonald's here in the Florida Classic from Orlando as Bethune Cookman is back on offense from their own 25 yard line down by three Mike Corey former NFL quarterback Jay Walker with you today as Bethune Cookman has to try to get the offense going Jay what's been happening with them today the Florida a done a good job of stopping the run and Bethune Cookman's a team that wants to run first and second then throw on third but Florida a has been stopping the run on first and second down Whoa. Oh, and look at this. What a sack by Florida AM. And that is Brandon Davis in the face of Quentin Williams. Well, we talked about them having the ability to stop the run on first and second down. Well, this is a tackle for loss. You're going to see Davis just shoot the gap from his defensive end position and put a good lick on Quentin Williams. 
And Davis wasn't done bringing the flavor. <laughs> keep it going, yeah. keep it going. Their first down run defense has been tremendous. Second down and 16, more pressure. And Ike Jackson on the reception now makes the moves across the 25 and up to the 28-yard line really took something out of nothing. That was scary. Look at the pressure from Devontae Johnson for Florida AM. Yeah, and as a quarterback, you're taught. Let him get as close to you as possible. This is probably too close for comfort. Williams does a good job just getting rid of that football at the last moment. Huge third down and seven here for Bethune Cookman. Jackson picked up nine in that last play on the catch. Four receivers set. Clinton Williams stepping up. Williams going to try to get it himself. He does. First down and up to the 40 yard line. So Quentin Williams at quarterback, the sophomore, runs for the first. You know why he was able to get that man to man coverage across the board? You're going to see it, and there's nobody to account for the quarterback in the middle of the field. That's the danger when you play man to man coverage. People have their back turned to the quarterback. They don't see where he is because they're chasing wide receivers. He was able to run for the first down. And now Jackson. And we'll lose yardage on this first down run. Devontae Johnson, who was bringing pressure off the edge before, and this time makes a tackle. What have we said the key for Florida a has been? Their first down run defense has been great. That's why they're able to slow down this Wildcat offense and force Bethune to throw the football, which is not what they like to do. Total defense for Florida a and fourth in the MEAC this season. And once again, you see Florida a coming out, preparing to play what we used to call straight cover one. Man to man with free safety help in the deep middle of the field. Wide receivers lined up in their chest. Eddie Poole, wide receiver, bottom of your screen. He's been big today and flags are down. Ball start. Offense, number 53. Five yard penalty. Second down. One forced error is going to bring it to second and 17 now. Uh, and I think the confusion has been caused I don't think the Wildcats expected Florida A&M to challenge them with man-to-man -man coverage, bump and run. So they're trying to make a call or a change at the line of scrimmage. And that's the second time we've seen them get called for delay of game. Six penalty this afternoon for them, 61 yards. Movement. Wow. False start. Number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. Uh, now if I told you that one of these teams was the number one team in HBCU football and the other team was middle of the pack, just struggling, you probably think it was reversed by what you're seeing on the field here today. Fam, you's playing like they're one of the cream of the crops, and Bethune is playing like a team that's playing on their heels. Second down and 22 for Bethune Cookman from the 28. I've watched the screen or the draw play here. Well, there you go. Quinton Williams keeping it and gets up to the 40, so gets back some of the wow. penalty yards right there, plus a couple. It'll be 10 left to go here on third down. You've got to do you've got to do a better job of anticipating. They allowed him to gain too much yardage on that run there. You knew something like a screen of draw was coming. They called a quarterback draw and he runs for over 10 yards. Now they've got a chance of converting this on third down. 160 of total yards for Quentin Williams today, accounting for Bethune Cookman offensively. Third down and 10, however, now from the 40. Can they convert? Four receivers set, Jackson in the backfield. If they play man to man, I'd look for Eddie Poole at the bottom of your screen, number three. Pressure again, dumps it off. That's incomplete. Forward pass. It'll be fourth down and ten. And how about the pressure this afternoon from FAMU defensively? Yeah, that's Patrick Scott. The nose tackle getting pressure. That's a bull rush up the middle. And right when he wants to leave to escape the blitz coming from Devontae Johnson on the outside, Scott had the firm bull rush up the middle, no place to go. And Florida and defense keeps doing it again. 
Somebody's got to block number four, Devontae Johnson for Florida AM. He was huge in that last series. Here's the punt going out of bounds inside the 10, and once again at the six yard line. The Florida AM, they'll be undaunted. They went 97 yards for a touchdown in the first half. They'll have to go 94 here. We'll see if they can. 10 to 7, they lead it. Suppose you need some extra cash fast. What do you do? Drive to a payday store, stand in line, and wait? Hi, Montel here. Put the keys down and go to MoneyMutual.com. MoneyMutual has a network of over 100 short-term lenders who could get you up to $1,000 in as little as 24 hours, even if you have less than perfect credit. It's easy and it's private. That's why over a million people have turned to MoneyMutual. So, forget about the long lines. Remember, MoneyMutual.com or call 1-800-555-CASH. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy? 5-Hour Energy supports the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. So I can get the energized feeling I need and support a great cause? I'm sold. Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy? Yeah, and a portion of every sale goes to the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. I'm sold. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy. Get the alert, energized feeling you need and support breast cancer research and access to care. In one of the biggest games of the year, two hard-hitting division leaders collide. Hey, today we got a fight on our hands, baby! The 7-2 and two Bears bring their punishing defense to the city by the bay, where the Niners hope to tighten their grip on the NFC West. Countdown. Rattlers over the Wildcats, 10-7 here in the third, getting ready to get back on offense. Florida a &M. Time now, though, for Where I'm From, brought to you by the U.S. Marines. And there is Akeel Blunt. Bill Brunt, look at that. Look at the pedigree. Son of NFL Hall of Famer Mel Blunt from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, freshman linebacker. And he's wearing number 47. I've seen that number 47 jersey before on a Blunt. That same number as Dad wore. That's right. Nobody gets that one. He has to have that one for sure. And now Florida AM offensively deep in their own territory at their own six. Keep in mind, they've already got a 97 yard drive in the game. Can they put together this would be a 94 yard drive? Eddie Rocker in the backfield. And more flags on this play as Damian Fleming took the snap. False start. Offense. Number 60. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Damian Fleming today. He had 270 yards passing last week. He's over 2,000 on the season. And the guy that you've talked about has been very mature beyond his years. Really makes the offense go. And it's been a good mix for them today. I mean, one of the keys for being a for being a good quarterback is having the ability to manage the game, and that's what he does. Rocker. And forward progress. He'll be at the two-yard line. He'll lose a yard on the play. And after the penalty and a loss of one, they're just going in the wrong direction. Another little squirmish here. Flag is down again. Rocker stood up by Jarkevis Fields on the tackle for Bethune Cookman. We'll get the call here once again. Daryl Davis, the referee today, has had a lot going on. Skirmish in the end zone after the play. Rocker lost about a yard. The result of the play is second down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 88 of the offense. Half the distance to the goal, it will be second down, and the defender, because he lost his helmet as a result of the foul, will not have to leave the game. All right, so good explanation there. That was Michael Etheridge that time, number 88 for Florida A&M. So it replays second down, but they're at the half yard line at this point here in the third. It is second down, second down. 
Second down and 15 for Florida a and at the one. High formation, Rocker the deep back. Rocker close to the two, if that. And they're just trying to get some breathing room. And Jay, you talk about tempers flying here a little bit. It is really starting to get a little chippy here now. I, th I think so. I mean, what you have, and I don't want to use this term lightly, but you've got Bethune Cookman. They've been the big dog on the block. They intimidate people. They wear you out in the second half. Florida AM, kid from a different neighborhood, they're standing up. They're putting up a fight, some resistance. And when that happens, things get a little chippy. You start getting a lot of personal foul whistles. Which is, you know, you, you don't want to see the game determined on penalties like this because it's been such a hard fought game by both teams. You want them to play in between the whistles. There's no foul for an illegal substitution. Fam, you did not break the hook. 12 players. Let's see if they're trying to throw one here and try to get get something. Maybe a pass interference call or something like that. Fleming has a little bit of time back there. There we go. Incomplete. Travis Harvey, the intended target. The coverage is back there. Tim Burke and also DJ Howard. This will, this will test your manhood. Cover two, quarterback trying to squeeze it in the window between the cornerback and the safety. This is the ball there. If he goes up with two arms and makes that, that could have been caught. I mean, that ball was in a position where he could have made that play. But you think Harvey might have heard the footsteps coming over from the free safety position. Brandon Holt. Not much room there as he's playing from the back of his own end zone. Patrick Harris back to return. Harris lets it bounce once he slips. That'll be excellent field position for Bethune Cookman. Starting this drive in Florida AM territory, down by three late in the third. We'll be back. Florida AM is hanging on to a three point lead here on the third. They had a third down pass play, Jay, deep in their own territory. Cover two. This will test your manhood right here, but in a big game like this, you've got to step up and make a play. This is a catchable ball. Get two arms up, jump. You're going to get hit anyway. Help out your quarterback make that play. That could have been a huge third down conversion if Harvey was able to come down with that pass. Instead, after the punt, it's excellent field position for Bethune Cookman at the 41 yard line of Florida AM, down by three. On the ground, Isidore Jackson. Not much. Brandon Hepburn on the tackle, the middle linebacker for Florida AM, and this guy at 6'4, 235. He does everything for this team. He can run, he can hit. Great scholar in the classroom, already graduated. Guy you talked about, Mel Kuyper, has him ranked as top 25 linebackers in the country at inside linebacker position. Second down and nine in the rollout. Quinton Williams going deep, and it's Oh, wow. Lane. And he had David Blackwell and beat the coverage. David Blackwell was a former quarterback here, Bethune Cookman on a little wheel route. Did a good job of moving the pocket, allowing Quinton Williams to get outside of the pocket. Does a good job, but this ball just sails on him, and that's the side where the wind is really a factor on that side of the stadium. We've seen kickoffs going to the end zone. The wind is blowing that way. Floated on him, got caught in the wind. Incomplete pass. That was Denmark, the linebacker there, hanging back, trying to get back on coverage. So now third down and nine, Bethune Cookman at the 40. Huge third down here. And before it, whistles blow Do we have a timeout here timeout Bethune Cookman it's the first charge timeout of the half it's a 30 second timeout so Bethune Cookman calls timeout their first of the second half well you know that time of year where everybody wants to know who's going to win the black college national championship so all season long we've been doing our power rankings so let's give you an update a look at the power rankings howard delaware state on the bubble let's go ahead and scratch delaware state uh -huh. they got beat by howard today I so howard it. is next on the bubble number five alabama state reggie barlow squad number four rick comages at jackson state did a fantastic job they control their own destiny they win today they will be in the swag championship game in december arkansas pine bluff Monty coleman great job they've been steady all year they will be in the SWAC championship game. Number two team in HBCU, Big Blue. 
Big Blue, they're trying to get into the postseason. They are going into the, today's contest. They're seven and two, trying to get to nine, eight and two. Will that get him? I don't know. And the number one team in HBCU football. Oh, should I put them on the bubble? <laughs> They're not playing like it thus far, but Thune Cookman's had a phenomenal football season. There are two losses on the year, Tennessee State, University of Miami. Florida a and trying to add on to that list. Third down and nine, Bethune Cookman. Three receivers. Williams. Guns it. Catch made by the tight end Jordan was Murphy, hit. but shy of the first down by about a two yards or so at the 33 yard line. So they're going to probably go for this here, you think, Jack? Uh, you think so? I mean, they're more aggressive. Brian Jenkins has been more aggressive all season long, but Quentin Williams took a shot on that last one. You talk about a manhood game. Free blitzer right up the middle, decked him, but he stood in there and completed the pass. Fourth down. They like to bait you into thinking they're going to run it, and then they'll go deep with Eddie Poole right here, number three. It's their first charge time out of the half. It's a 30 second time timeout out by Florida a and Fourth down and three coming up. Crucial play here late in this third quarter. Fans, Heisman Trophy candidate Colin Klein. He's lifted the unbeaten Kansas State Wildcats to the top of the BCS standings. And tonight on ESPN, it's number one Kansas State and Baylor. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN as well. And here's what the two quarterbacks have done for each school. Yeah, Colin Klein just gutsy. 31 touchdowns on the season. He was responsible for that throwing and rushing. This game's going to be a shootout. I mean, one thing we know Baylor can do, they can score points. Now, can they stop Kansas State? That's going to be the question. But I want to know, can Kansas State stop the Baylor offense? That's coming up tonight. So they flipped the formation. They went to timeout. Flip the formation when they before timeout they had pulled down here on the wide side of the field. Now they've snuck him to the top part of the formation, anticipate man to man bumper run coverage. Double tight end set to the right option. Jackson, he's going to have the first down. Jackson going out of it down the sideline, and Jackson will have a touchdown. Isidore Jackson for the score. Versus man to man coverage. If you've got man-to-man -man coverage called and you've got an option play called on the defense, on offense, you've got the advantage. Now a flag down. 3-13 left in the third. Let's get the call. Result of the play is a touchdown after the play. Unreported conduct. Number two of the third. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So after the touchdown, Jackson with the unsportsmanlike, and for the second straight time, will be kicking off from the 20-yard line, but Bethune-Cookman has the advantage now. Do you think that Florida A&M regrets not going for it on a couple fourth downs, fourth and two and fourth and one, where they had the ball in the middle of the field and they elected to punt? That's a difference between Bethune-Cookman and Florida A&M. Coach Jenkins, you see it on his face, intense, not afraid to roll the dice and to take a chance on his defense. Jay, big plays here today. What happened on this one? This option man to man. So the the end guy on the line of scrimmage decided to hit the quarterback instead of playing the running back, who's the most dangerous man that can hit you for a home run. Schematically, they were just done from the start. Man to man coverage all over the field. Wide receivers just ran off their guys, and then it became Ike Jackson after that. That's good blocking by the wideouts down the field as you said and there's a scoring drive four plays 41 yards just a minute and 16 seconds so what was a crucial fourth down play and they end up getting a touchdown out of it and you know maybe you're right with Florida A&M having a couple of opportunities in Bethune Cookman territory that they decided to punt yeah, you know, when, you, when you're the underdog and they were coming in this, everybody knew it. You've got to do some things that are out of character, out of context. And we have not seen that yet from Fort a and This has been a hard-fought game. You can tell the team is playing inspired football, which is what you'll get in a rivalry game. But you've got to be willing to roll the dice and open up everything. This is the last game of the year for Florida A&M. I don't think you play it close to the vest. I think you go ahead and try some things out of your comfort zone to beat a football team that many people say is better than the one that you have. 
They're kicking off from the 20 after the unsportsmanlike. It's going to be James Owens on the return from the 15-yard line. James Owens to Florida A&M. Owens spinning still on his feet across midfield into the 47 of Bethune Cookman. And you know what you do right now? That's a 37-yard run. We'll get to that in a sec here. Folks, tensions. They're at their peak. Brad Kislowski trying to hold off five-time champ Jimmy Johnson, the final race of the season in NASCAR to determine the championship and earn a spot in history. It's the chase for the Sprint Cup, the Ford EcoBoost 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins tomorrow at 1.30 on ESPN. As Florida and AM back on offense. Pass caught. Lenworth Lennon. And it's... It's the time of the game doesn't normally dictate this in a normal game, but it's four down territory for Florida A&M right now. You know, you get the ball. If you've got anything fourth in less than three or four yards, then you, you're going for it. I would be. That's what I'm talking about, what you have to do. Get the ball in Fleming's hands more. Keep it going. Let it fly. They lost two on the pass play behind the line of scrimmage to Lennon. Now second down and 12 from midfield for the Rattlers. Damian Fleming. Here comes pressure. Caught by Lennon again. This time for a positive gain inside the 45 yard line to the 44. Takes a couple of big shots. And a little bit of words after the play as well. Real quarterback's going to stand in the pocket in the face of pressure. They brought the blitz from his weak side. He sees it coming. Throws a strike. That's why it's so important as a quarterback to be accurate. Arm strength is not just enough. Hit a wide receiver in stride and Lennon. Able to make pick up some yards and almost broke a tackle for a bigger game. Now third down and six. We say four down territory. We'll see here if they don't convert on this third down. Four receivers. Damian Fleming. Pressure. Gets away. Fleming needs to get rid of the football and he's going to be brought down at the 46. Tevin Tony on the tackle. And, and that's the one poor decision that he made today. When you when you're lining up. You can't afford to get sacked there. We, you know, we had said that, hey, if there's anything less fourth and four, fourth and five, they would consider going for it. He gets a sack, makes it fourth and eight. Now you've got to punt the ball away. That was the case there, just trying to do too much. Had he just thrown the ball away for an incompletion, they probably would have considered going for it. Brandon Holdren to punt this one away and back to return Patrick Harris for the food cooking. And whistles and flags before the kick. Ball start. Offense, number 19, five-yard penalty, fourth down. You know, now Holdren can just really try to get into it here. As they'll look to pin Bethune-Cookman deep in their own territory. I mean, other than that play on defense where they just gave up that long touchdown run, Jay, defensively, Florida a and I mean, they've, they've been doing a good job. Yeah. Yep. But now it becomes a matter of this point in the game, plays on the field. So now they're getting ready to get right back on the field and have to hold off these Wildcats again. Uh, looked like a food cookman was off sides and no flag down. Here's Harris as he gathers into the 15 yard line and to the sideline. He goes knocked out just across the 25. A lot of movement there before the kick, but and Florida AM has played great defense tonight. They gave up the big run on the last series. Now the series right now where they need to come up with another stop. 36 yard kick and a 10 yard return with just 45 seconds to go in the third and like you said I think this is kind of what the Thune Cookman does and they kind of wear you down in the second half wear you down and then the offense starts to pick it up and they start running the football and next thing you know they're eating up time on the clock and your defense has been on there for a long time and you find yourself down by two scores Jackson Runs it to his own man, stays on his feet. Good play, bumps it to the outside. Jackson first down, Jackson again. And finally brought down by Devin Roberts. For Florida a and and maybe just what you were just saying there is starting to wear him down, and they go to Jackson again. Yeah, I mean, he's the key to this offense. He's the focal point. He runs hard, and he gets stronger as the game goes on. Contact by his own tight end, Jordan Murphy. Then he bounces it outside, makes one rattler miss, then a stiff arm. Mike Jackson is the straw that serves a drink for the Thune Cookman's offense. And they go no huddle after a 19 yard gain. Back to Jackson, and this time he's brought down for a loss in the backfield. Ellie Hippolyte on the tackle, the defensive end, the senior from Daytona Beach. There's four and a half sacks on the season, and 
That should be the final play of the third quarter. And it will be. So second down and 12 with Finn Cookin when we come back. The 67th meeting between Florida A&M and the Thune Cookman. The Florida Classic from Orlando. 15 minutes on the clock when we return to the Wildcats leader by four. The Mid-Eastern. Welcome back to ESPN College Football and the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's as we get set for the fourth quarter. Bethune Cookman on top, 14 to 10. As we look at the updated MEAC standings, Mr. Jay Walker. How Howard defeated Delaware State. Congratulations to Coach Harold and the Bison. They secured a second place finish in the MEAC Conference. That was a team that was one in 10 just two seasons ago. They're starting to turn around that program and cats off North Carolina Central. That's been one of the surprise programs of the MEAC Conference thus far. Henry Frazier getting things done a year early in Durham, North Carolina. And we start the fourth quarter here with second down and 12 for the food cookman as Quentin Lane's deep drop. And on the pass, caught KJ Stroud makes the first man miss. Stroud first down inside the 40 of Florida and m and down to the 38 yard line. But just a poor job of tackling by the Florida A&M secondary. Good penetration. Williams is just in retreat position. Stroud comes across formation. Got to make that open field tackle right there. Would have been a minimum gain if they make the tackle. Instead, Stroud breaks it, picks up the first down. Marvin Ross with a tackle after a 23-yard gain in first and 10 of the 38. On the ground, Bethune Cookman goes inside the 35. And down to the 32. Williams on the run. What's starting to happen now? Momentum. Bethune Cookman starting to beat up on Florida A&M. Pounding the football, running on first down, picking up six yards, missed tackles. Well, and I think the no huddle, too. Just fast and furious. And it's tough for Florida AM to catch their breath. Now that Isidore Jackson. Oh, that's a face mask. Black is down. You got it. Face mask potentially here as the tackle was made by Patrick Scott. And he's limping off the field. They can't afford to not have him return to this football contest. Personal foul, face mask, number 95 with the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Jackson's got that low center of gravity. Thought he was going to break this tackle. Good move in the hole, but that's just a face mask right there. That'll bring down everybody. Ooh. Mm. That was like a horse collar face mask That's tackle. Dangerous. Thank goodness nobody was injured on that play. Well, how about this Bethune Cookman defense? I mean, they're on offense right now, but wow. They pitched a shutout on FAMU in the third quarter. That's their story for the year. Second half, they just don't allow teams to score points. Williams now goes on the ground of the handoff to Rodney Scott, and Scott gets inside the 10. And, and you know why that play worked? Because Patrick Scott left the game and they bring in a freshman nose tackle and Michael Lovejoy is going to be a good one, but he weighs about 35 pounds left than Patrick Scott. So they run right at the teeth of the defense. Second and three from the nine. Scott again. Ball out. Fumble. Florida AM. This would be huge if they've got this. Bethune Cookman trying to create some separation. Let's see that they get it back. And that's a good old fashioned pile. I mean, they're not going to. Fisher's going to make that whistle, whoever comes out with that football. Man, he's got it. Right there, he's holding on to it. Yeah. Coming out of the pack with it, Devin Roberts. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. They get it. They still save the film. Cookman football. Wow. Said, Roberts comes out of the pack with the ball. Mm. I mean, there was no whistle, you know, on that signal and that they knew had the possession right away. And normally when it's like that, you go to whoever gets it out the bottom of the pile. Wow. You can tell Florida and him, oh, Charles, he wants to talk about that, at least give an explanation. How does somebody come away with the football for Florida a and m That play is under further review. It's under review. We will return. Bethune Cookman on top, 14 to 10, early fourth in the Florida Classic. Stay tuned.
14-10, Bethune-Cookman. To review the previous play, it stands as it looked like Florida A&M's Devin Roberts came out of the bottom of the pile, Jay, with a fumble recovery for the Rattlers, but instead they say still Bethune-Cookman football, and now it's third down and a yard. Yeah, and right now you've got to make a stop with the defense that is very stingy. You've got to try and hold them to a field goal because that way it's still within a one-score game. The odds are scoring twice on this Bethune-Cookman defense, slim and none. Williams, option to Ronnie Scott. Scott, and he's not going to get there. Good, strong defensive play up front. Brandon Denmark, among others, for Florida A&M. Devin Roberts as well. Now, this is where I don't agree with Jenkins. We know he likes to be aggressive and go for it on fourth down. you got to get yourself, your team, a touchdown lead. Now, if you don't convert now and Florida A&M scores, they don't tie you. They take the lead and possibly win the game. Whoa. And I can aggressive understand. Aggressive play caller. And think about it. He's already seen Florida A&M go 97 yards down the field today for a touchdown. So they're going to roll the dice. Head off. First down and more. Anxiety toward the line. And Jenicus love it. No signal. Shy of the touchdown. But it's a first down and first and goal from the half yard line. Wow, that would have been the second time on fourth down that they scored a touchdown when all they needed was a, when all they really wanted was a first down. And this one here, they call Lovett's number, and he just pounds it up the middle. Good effort, doesn't go down. Is that knee down? Yeah, all the, he got a good spot. He should have been further back. They shouldn't have the ball on the one-yard line. They go back to Lovett. Love it to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. The third Cookman. We kept the pressure on. It's just so much pressure for the Florida A&M defense to keep them out of the end zone. Running the football the now in the second the half like they do. And this is Wildcat football in the second half. Pound them on the ground and play staunch defense. Andronicus Lovett, senior from Gainesville, Florida, with the touchdown run. And it's been hurt for the extra point kick. It's good. And it's 21 to 10. Bethune Cookman has opened up an 11 point advantage early in the fourth. Two for two on fourth down today. That one set up a touchdown. CBO, cheddar, bacon, onion. I link the number on your screen. Call now. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Bethune Cookman is now on top by 11 here in the fourth. Three and a half minutes gone by. Mike Corey alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker with a Florida Classic today from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. How about that guy with a touchdown run? Just willed his way in there. Florida a &M, they've got to respond. You know, that team went down their drove and scored on you 74 yards, 10 plays. That's what they do in the second half of football game. Now, if you're Florida a &M, you've got to respond. Spread kick. Oh, wow. Hooked up by Owens. Trying to make a play from the 20. And a flag down as he gets hit at the 23. Two separate flags came in late during that return. Daryl Davis today as he sorts it out. It's almost like a three man crew today. It's Mike <laughs> Jay and Daryl. So we're going to end up kicking this again. Offsides on Bethune Cookman on a block in the back by Florida AM. And I would definitely make them kick it. We want them to re-kick it. Now, Bethune Cookman is kicking into the win. So the kickoffs aren't going so far. So that's why I think Coach yeah, Jenkins told his kicker to squib it. Number eight of the kicking team, illegal block in the back, number 45 of the receiving team. Those penalties were offset. We would kick again. 
And I would talk to the second level on my return squad. They did that squib kick, and there were at least two Florida a &M, uh, return men that just ran right by the football where they could have just uh, grabbed the football, fallen down, and they would have gotten great field position. They're kicking it into the wind. Have your return men move up. Second level, if they try and squib it, just sit on it. It'll be great field position. Here you got a couple of big guys back there for Florida A&M. Mario Chisholm and Matthew Caleb Helms. Second level right there at the 20-yard line. Bethune Cookman to re-kick. Here's Ven Hurd. The return guys, James Owens and Vasty Paul for Florida and out. So they're anticipating the squib. Well, they're up at the 10-yard line, ready to come running forward if they do that same squib kick again. Here's Owens. Great adjustment. To the 35. Good cutback. And up to the 39-yard line. Let's go back to the last drive. It was fourth down and three for Bethune Cookman inside the 10. Gutsy play call. High risk, high reward, though. They went for it on fourth and three and got down to the one-yard line. Almost got a touchdown and then love it. Called his number again. Punched it in for the score. Ryan Jenkins is playing to win. We had another flag on the play. Imagine that, as it's another five-yard penalty on Bethune Cookman. So up to the 44-yard line goes Florida AM, and it's solid field position to start this drive. Still plenty of time in this ball game. But they're down 11. They're down 11, and Bethune Cookman is doing what they want to do right now. They've pitched a shutout in the third quarter. They were able to eat up some clock running the football. Keep in mind again, this is the defense that's only allowed 60 points total for the whole year in the second half. That comes out to six points per game and a half. And right now, Florida AM is down by 11 with only 15 minutes to go, less than 15 minutes, 10 minutes to go in the game. Owen shut down after a two yard run. Any rocker is back in for blocking right now as Fleming in some trouble. Rolls out, got a man deep down the field, and he overthrows him incomplete. And that was Lenworth Lennon, the intended target. It, it, it's not the overthrow. It's he hasn't made the adjustment. Their first time going this direction with the win. There's a jet stream up there. This ball leaves his hands. It takes off an extra five yards because of the win. We know that Fleming is deadly accurate, but it's his first time Florida a ms had the ball going in this direction. It sailed on them. Yeah, and too bad for them. Their first time really kind of going deep down the field. They had yeah. a man too. Yes, had a guy that was open, and you see the, the flag. It's literally gusting pretty hard. Anything that's up in the air, if you don't step into the throw, it will sail on you or carry. Third down and eight. Bethune Cookman jumps, they get back. Fleming from the shotgun. Steps up. Sideline. Catch. First down. Lennon has it. Tim Burke ran him out. That's a big time throw. You, you can't teach that. Stepping up into the pocket off his back leg, off his back foot. This is a great one. He's going to step up. Then he recognized he's open right in the middle of his step and able to get that ball out there in a hurry to pick up the first down. Keep it in his hands. Band in the run. You're down by 10. Token runs from now on. Damon Fleming throw the football. And they're, and they're running it. And they're going down the sideline. It is Eddie Rocker. And Rocker again brought out by Tim Burke. And they're able to get the first down, but imagine if Rocker is tackled inbounds. The clock's going to tick. Mm -hmm. You know, you need two scores. I just think you almost abandoned the running game right now. Is it too early? No, but we've been saying this for since the second or third quarter. You've got to play this game aggressively. Jenkins is playing aggressive, and this team is up by 11. Each team with two timeouts. And they go back to Rocker. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, he's made some plays today. That's about a four-yard run to the 28-yard line. But, yeah, the clock, not really a factor at this given moment, but you do have to come out with points on this drive, correct? I mean, that's kind of what you're saying? You do, and you don't want to feel going. When they've gotten the ball in the red zone, they haven't been able to punch it in. They've had to, you know, throw the ball in there from far away. 
I would try and pick up the tempo of this game. High formation set with Ronnie Lockett. Now is the fullback. And back to Rocker. Flag down. Rocker to the 25. Three yards shy of a first. And that's not going to help matters. You know what? It, it will in the fact that now it's going to force Florida and them right, throw the to throw the football, which yeah. is what they should be doing. Hold the offense, number 88, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, and the other thing is here, he's Correction. probably thinking, you know, acting head coach Earl Holmes, that, well, I'm in four down territory, obviously, this time. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, he would be foolish if they don't pick up a first to punt. <laughs> You know, now. Well, we've seen some punts before, which don't surprise, but yeah, I mean, I think it's been four down territory for a little while. Yeah. But they have not shown that. And the trust just to take the handcuffs off of Fleming and let it go. Now it's second down and 16, but at the 38 yard line, four receivers, and again back to the ground. Here's Owens. Owens, undercut at the 38. What a tackle by Tim Burke. And he's had three in a row for Bethune Cookman. Great open field tackle by Tim Burke here. Rocker does a good job of bouncing it to the outside, getting to daylight. I'm sorry, that's James Owens, but Burke comes up, and this is just textbook what he does. Shoulder there, wrap up, attack, drive through the thigh. Burke, a scrappy player. 5'10", 175 from Fort Lauderdale on the tackle. Make it third down and 15. Fleming. Now he's got plenty of daylight to run. He's going to go down the field. He's got a man in his cut. And it's in the end zone, it's a touchdown. To Wade Harvey for Florida AM, 37 yards. Throw the football. You've got the best quarterback in the conference. He doesn't throw interceptions. I told you that penalty was going to turn out to help Florida AM because it was going to force them to pass. And Damian Fleming rewards his coaching staff with a touchdown score. Did I tell you I think this kid's pretty good, Damian Fleming? Well, he's finally on display, as you said, and they're going to go for the extra point. It's blocked. Yeah, that was also in question there, Jay. It's picked up and stepping out of bounds that time. It was Nick Addison. So they don't go for two, and we have 8.04 to play, and they trail it by five. I mean, the, the card says that you go for two, but that was blocked with Damian Fleming showing you what he can do. The mobility, extending the play. Harvey gets into the end zone, and don't go anywhere. The Rattlers are striking. Acting head coach Earl Holmes for Florida A&M. Also the defensive coordinator has seen his team come back with six. They don't get the extra point. They trail by five now. 21-16 here in the fourth. Jay, here's what happened. Yeah, I mean, Damian Fleming just extending the play, buying time, looking. He's a passer first because he keeps looking downfield. He could have run for 10 yards, but he was rewarded. Great vision downfield. Hit him in stride, step into the throw, and then the extra point is blocked. Now you've got Florida A&M down by five with eight minutes to go. Looks like maybe Nick Addison had the block for Bethune Cookman. There's a scoring drive for Florida AM. And here's the kickoff from the four yard line now. Courtney Keith on the return across the 20. Keith stood up at the 25 yard line. So Bethune Cookman with a five point lead in the ball. And a little extra activity again after the play here. What a rivalry between these two. And another flag is down. A Florida Classic, 67th meeting. Last 10 ball games have been split. Five for each team. And I like the official getting in there, breaking it up, realizing, you know, hey, let's try and separate this. 
I don't think a penalty was called, so they're just going to let it play out, which is good. They realize yeah. think the timbers are flying out there. Let the kids play. Don't let a call do it. But during that break, you know, this is right here. This is George Small. He was the, he's the associate head coach. He actually was the head coach of North Carolina A&T, and I think everybody knows Earl Holmes going to be a great coach. And he's telling them in that situation, you might want to consider going for two. And I give credit to Coach Holmes to going over there and talking to George Small about the situation. That's yeah. smart. That's showing some, that he's a humble coach, but he's also going to be a good one because he's not afraid to listen to his assistant coaches. Jackson on the handoff, and not much on first down, maybe a yard. Now, four to eight and defensively. It hasn't been that bad today. They played very solid football. They did give up a big 33 yard run for a touchdown. Brandon Davis on the tackle. That was the killer right there. But it was a fourth down play for Bethune Cookman. They scored a touchdown. And what I'm surprised is that Bethune has not done play action on first down. They're right for it. Florida AM is loading the box on first and second down to stop the run. Set them up. Play action fake to Jackson. Look for Poole or Stroud over the top. Williams will go from the shotgun. The two receivers and Jackson in the backfield. So they're bringing run blitz right now. Williams keeps still on his feet, shy of the first as he gets to the 33. Tackled down from behind by Michael Dupree. And Quentin Williams puts them in third down and two. Great job by Quentin Williams. Nothing at all in this play. They brought the blitz from the strong side, but he was able to slip a tackler there, keep the legs going, pick up more yardage. And just come up two yards short of the first down. Big play right here. I wouldn't be surprised if Florida AM brought the whole kitchen sink blitz here. Lovett is in. They give it to him. And Lovett's going to be tackled down right at the stick. This is going to depend on the spot. Lovett, who got the first down after fourth down and three. He got a, he got a nice spot. Back on the final drive and then scored the touchdown. Here he is again. He's going to pound it. You know, he's got to get to the white line there. I mean, the ball lands right on the white line. They gave him forward progress wow. and they gave him the first down. Favorable spot. Now, Lovett seems to be their guy when they need that yards. In a crucial situation. They go back to Antronicus Lovett. Oh, I would do play action on first down if I was Bethune Cookman. I mean, every time they've run the ball first down, they've gained one, maybe two yards. They're stuffing the box on first down. They're open to it. They're doing it on second down as well. You could play at your Florida in right now and hit them for a big play. That's a good point. It's a lot of time to kind of run out there. With 550 still on the clock. You got a 3-4 defensive team that's got seven guys close to the line of scrimmage. That's a run stop and blitz for them. Double tight end set with Jordan Murphy and Chase Terry. They're probably going to bring him off the slot as well to help with run support. You see him creeping in there? They're stuffing the run. you got to give him play action. They do. Williams rolling. Keep it. And a hard tackle from behind at the 42-yard line. It was Brandon Hepburn, no flags down. Uh, did you see how much time he had on the play action fake? Because everybody's looking in the box. Williams, good job here with the ball fake skills. Nobody outside there. And when the quarterback breaks contain like that, he's a very dangerous offensive weapon. Good open field tackle there by, of course, Brandon Hepburn. He's all over the football field. Third down. 32. A long two from just across the 42-yard line. They've had success running to the right side of their offensive line. I think they'll probably go back there. Russell, before the snap. Timeout. Timeout. The third Cookman. The second charge timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. The Wildcats will talk it over. With a crucial third down and two coming up here at their own 42 yard line really almost third and three here Jay but you know they've gotten some crucial first downs in this ball game there's no doubt about it as they lead it by five tonight fans is a perfect opportunity to use watch ESPN you can check out number one Kansas State versus Baylor on your ESPN on ESPN with your laptop tablet or mobile device using watch ESPN.com or the watch ESPN app also while enjoying the battle between number 13 Stanford and Number two, Oregon on ABC. A big night in college football coming your way this evening. And hats off 
to this Florida A&M defense. I mean, they put up a gutsy effort versus a team that scores points in bunches. I mean, this Bethune-Cookman offense averages 31 points a game. Right. They're 10 points below their average with four minutes to go and four minutes and some change to go. But as great as that effort's been, still really comes down to plays like this. Right now, third down crucial for the Rattlers. I'll go with a four wide receiver set. Trips to the top of your screen. Pool by himself on the bottom with Jackson in the backfield. They've had success running the option with Quinn Williams. They wouldn't be surprised they put it in his hands again and let him make the decision. Williams, option to Jackson. No, it's going to be close. Where's the spot? 44 looks like 44 and a half yard line first down markers at the 45 we shall see the option was coming they got the pitch get the ball to Jackson he gets outside he knows where the first down marker is first hit doesn't take him out a little second effort and I thought he was well short well he is short Brandon Denmark pushed him out for Florida A&M they're gonna go for this here it's fourth and a half a yard wow all game, what's he been doing? Yeah. He, he's not playing. It's a different than coaching strategy. It's been aggressive play calling by Bethune Cookman all day. Now with them taking a delay of game, though, that they reset the clock. So now they're, they're pointing. He wants them to reset the clock, but I never saw an official say that. Well, Florida a and obviously, they need a touchdown here. Of course, they're down by five. They went for the extra point and got blocked. And there should be no reason to reset this clock. There was no spot or measurement done unless he requested a measurement. Right. You don't stop the clock. I mean, this is regular game situation. The play clock did not operate as instructed. So, therefore, there is no foul for a delay of game. Please set the play clock to 25 seconds, and it will begin on my signal. Do you think they're going to go for this here? Uh, yes, yeah, that's what they've done. That's what they've shown. I mean, this, this is the play clock here, so. 434, 433. They're going to punt yeah, now. 410. Here comes Corey Kowalski. Play clock. Winding down, they will get it off. Kowalski, shanked oh, it. Look at this. Whoa! Four to a and They're going to have it at their own 48-yard line. A six-yard kick. 3:49 to go in the Florida Classic. Hang on tight. a and with a football and offense. Wedley return. ESPN College Football in the Florida Classic presented by McDonald's and from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. And here we go. Mike Corey and Jay Walker with three minutes and 49 seconds on the clock. Florida a and with a football and down by five as they go to Rocker. Anthony Woodard on the tackle for Bethune Cookman. All right, Jay, what are you thinking here? They need a touchdown, obviously, but. And who's going to get him the touchdown? Yeah. It's going to be Damian Fleming. You know, and I understand you run the football now if you want to to maybe eat up a little bit of clock. So if you do get the touchdown to go ahead you don't leave Bethune a lot of time but getting this touchdown but when they scored it well, his touchdown throws on a broken play so I think you just have to drop back and let it go Lennon goes in motion lines up in the slot Fleming rolling out is going to be ripped down just across midfield into Bethune Cookman territory at the 48 yard line by Jarkevious Fields and now third down on the way and that was a great open field tackle by Fields but imagine they dropped back to pass. He was flushed out of the pocket. He still picked up positive yards, and that's all you want. I would take my chances there with Fleming running the ball in these situations right now. Let two him throw twice. Two timeouts for Florida and and one for Bethune Cookman. Third and five. Four wide. Fleming with time going for it all. Oh, what a. No, Lady almost had it. Travis Harvey, the intended target. Tim Burke on coverage, 21. Wow, Harvey had him by a step and started to separate. Might have left his feet just a little bit early. You see, he was on the down float. 
when he caught that ball, never able to wrestle it in. Missed time his jump just by that little bit. Fourth and five. Florida and in, five for 12 of the season at 42 percent. None bigger than this one right here. On the 48 of Bethune Cookman, three receivers. Fleming fires Leonard, first down inside the 40 and down to the 38. That's great coaching and great play selection. Man to man coverage, you want to throw it to crossing routes. Good job. He looked for the guy that had the crossing route. That was Linworth Lennon. He started to separate, picked up the yardage. The Rattlers are starting to strike. 10 yard gain by Lennon, who has led this team in receptions two years in a row now. Just a sophomore. Damian Fleming from the shotgun. And they hand it off to Eddie Rocker. And Rocker's going to lose major yardage back on the 45-yard line. That's a questionable call, to say the least. And with under two minutes to go, Florida A&M has put themselves in a tough situation now, Jay. I mean, yeah, I mean not only that, now you've got to use a timeout because they want to regroup. So they call the timeout. Timeout. Dawood Lane on the tackle for Bethune Cookman, and that's that wasn't smart. Second down and 17, with a minute and 53 to play. Well, coming up tonight on ABC, Oregon's path to the national title game in South Florida continues against Stanford. The Cardinal are still in contention for the Pac-12 championship and a Rose Bowl berth. Saturday night football presented by Windows 8. November 13, Stanford and number two, Oregon. Tonight at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. The film Cookman. This season defensively, 17 straight games with an interception. That's an FCS record. They have 19 on the year by eight different players, and I'm sure they're hoping they would yep. love to come up with one right now. And hats off to Florida and That tells you what a talent Damian Fleming is. He had to come close to throwing an interception. He's literally picked them apart, and that streak is on the line. Second down and 17 with four receivers after a loss of seven on a handoff to Eddie Rocker. Now Fleming, pump fakes. Can't get away from pressure. And the ball's loose, it's a fumble. Going the other way for Bethune Cookman's heavy Tony. He was down. We'll say he was down, that will not count. No touchdown, but a sack back at the 47 yard line. Harold loved the third no for Bethune the Cookman. The quarterback was tackled. And the tackle. The ball came out. Third down. The, he was whistled down. I know he got spun around. He had the pump fake and love just great penetration beating him. And as he's going, hits his foot. His knee's not down. That's a fumble. Mm. That is a fumble. Harold Love had the sack. Tevin Tony with a recovery. Now yeah, Florida wow. A&M catches a break. Yeah, wow, that should be reviewable. That's a fumble. This, this is going to be Bethune Cookman football. That's we talked about earlier. Is that the ball hit down as the quarterback hit the ground yeah. and not a fumble? That play is so now they're explaining review. that that they're going to review it. And as we said earlier, the MEAC conference is the only conference in the FCS that utilizes instant replay. By doing so for all their televised games, only for TV games, and this is why he's going, and as he's trying to secure the ball, he's not down yet. The foot of Harold Love actually kicks that ball out, and I think it's going to be the ball game. Well, if it is within Cookman football, no doubt about it, they have to give it to him down here because they blew the play dead. Yeah, and this so. is the best angle right here. So he's going not, not yeah. down. I think when they slow that down in the booth, You'll see before his butt hit the ground. So they're looking it over with a minute and 17 to play. Yeah, and this is why you do replay. I mean, you know, and some people have problems with replay. I say as long as you get the call right, then utilize the instant replay. It's got to be indisputable video evidence. And I think we've got it here. I mean, this is the best look you're going to get. When he's spinning around, he's got the ball. And watch the foot of love. It's up in the air. And he hits the ball. He's not down yet. And he is up clearly. His foot knocks the ball out. 
It's going to be Bethune Cookman football. If that's not indisputable video evidence, I don't know if there is. Is there a whistle? Well, you see the referee coming in right there at the end, you know, trying to stop it. But I don't think we heard the whistle. And did they give him the touchdown or were they just giving him the ball at that spot? Here's Daryl Davis. The, review, the runner was down on a runner and not the ground. The ball was out before he hit the ground. It was recovered by the Bethune Cookman. Well, the crowd noise by Bethune Cookman explains it all. They're going to give him the ball to 47, yeah, because they did blow the whistle after that. But it is Bethune-Cookman football, so they couldn't let the rest of the play go so everybody else not playing. But it's a five-point lead for Bethune-Cookman. They have the ball back and a fumble. Harold Love with a tackle. We saw, as you said, Jan, the replay, the ball going off of his foot, picked up by Tevin Tony and Bethune-Cookman. He's going to sneak out of here with a five-point victory in the Florida Classic. And what a fight from Florida and m today. I mean, valiant effort. Bethune Cookman will escape with this victory, barring a miracle or some type of fumble. But knowing Brian Jenkins the way I do, he's glad his team got tested. He wanted them to get tested so they won't relax and they'll go into postseason play more motivated than ever. Now, one thing we did not see much today or anything or other than Quentin Williams at the quarterback position. That was one thing that we thought we might see differently as they go on the ground to Jackson. Is that Broderick Waters is a senior. Jackie Wilson, a junior. Two other quarterbacks they've used a lot this year. It's been Quentin Williams all day. Quentin Williams has arrived. You know, and Coach Jenkins doesn't like to let us know who the quarterback is, but when you go back and look on film, it's been Williams job. He's been the one that's got it done and I think it's a good thing for the program. They finally made an investment at the quarterback position. Been the first clear starter they've had there since Matt Johnson. And as in the moment we're saying this, you know that Coach Jenkins will mess around. He'll start <laughs> Broderick Williams in the postseason just to keep everybody for a loop. But Broderick Waters and Jackie Wilson. But I think the future's arrived. I mean, he's the youngest guy. Normally, when you look at college football, if it's a close competition between a sophomore, a junior, and a senior, you give it to the sophomore because you've got more years with him in the program. The HBCU postgame report presented by Lexus comes your way right after this one, so stay tuned for that. The 67th meeting between these two, Florida AM and and Bethune Cookman. And the Wildcats will be getting ready for postseason play. Looking to become undefeated in the MEAC. First time since 1984 to hang on for the win here today, which is likely and will be their seventh win in a row. And they'll be headed to the postseason. That is tomorrow, the selection show, Jay, which you'll be on at 1.30 on ESPNU, the FCS selection show. And we'll see where the Thune Cupman will be placed. Now you just take a knee here. I mean, don't run the football. Exactly. Take a knee. Too many bad things can happen. There you go. <laughs> why, why have we seen some very <laughs> questionable decisions today by both teams for that matter? Yeah, yeah one the time. Over. <laughs> and you see he gave us a five-second smile, yeah. then it disappeared. And Bethune Cookman's going to the playoffs. And right now, Tennessee State is trailing at Tennessee Martin 21 to 6 in a game that that the Tigers had to win if they want to be in consideration for being selected. So we may see, be seeing the only HBCU that's going to advance in the postseason in Bethune-Cookman. And Coach Brian Jenkins still, still coaching hard here in his third year. He's going to go to 27 and 7, his third season at the helm. And I've, I've never seen him get doused with Gatorade. You no think that's game. coming here today? No, no. Oh, see that look on his face? He would be very <laughs> upset if that happened. Yeah. The clock will start. He's looking snap. around. <laughs> I think they're trying to set him up because she's asking for the headset <laughs> and he's got a smart he's keeping it on yeah all right headsets off now oh uh, yeah. you do it I mean yeah. he's an intense guy <laughs> oh wow uh, come it, on don't do this yeah I don't need to see this 
Tempers have flared a few times in this ball game today, but it's what you expect. It's a rivalry between these two. The Florida Classic. And there they go. They finally get Brian Jenkins of Bethune Cookman, the head coach. <laughs> As he yeah. raises the belt up into the air. Yeah, he's not too happy about that Dowson, but uh, hey, he deserves it. Hard fought, great season for Bethune Cookman football. I'm sure all fans of the MEAC Conference wish them well in the postseason play. Well, Brian Jenkins and Bethune Cookman, the Wildcats, they win it over Florida AM in the Florida Classic. 21 to 16, the final score. We'll be back with the HBCU post game report presented by Alexis right after this from Orlando, Florida. Stay tuned. Let's get more analysts analysis on today's game of the HBCU post game report brought to you by Lexus as head coach Brian Jenkins of Bethune Cookman getting the Gatorade bath they win it 21 to 16 the final in the Florida Classic Hi everybody and welcome back to Orlando here at the Citrus Bowl Mike Corey and former NFL quarterback Jay Walker and this was a close one throughout. You know, you expect it in this type of rivalry game. We got it here today. Yeah, on paper, it said Bethune Cookman should win this game running away, but Florida AM with acting head coach Earl Holmes did a fantastic job matching their intensity level. It came down to who's going to possess the ball at the very end. Costly turnover, cost the Rattlers there, but congratulations on a great season by Brian Jenkins and the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Yeah, they go undefeated in the MEAC at 8 and 0, getting ready for the playoffs, and that'll happen, and we'll find out tomorrow where they're going to be. Let's take a look at some of the uh, highlights of this one and what happened in Bethune Cookman able to win it by five points first the numbers for Quentin Williams yeah I mean he's a quarterback for the Wildcats and this is an offense that likes to run the football they average 250 yards rushing per game they throw for about 140 yards typical day at the office but the 85 yards stood out they were big runs when he got the 85 yards this was a big one they had them they were backed up and then he breaks off this 49 yard scamper which I think really helped the Wildcats grab momentum in this football contest and this time on the option, able to get it close. But he did a lot today and had a lot of different things happening. Yeah, when, when they were predicated on stopping Isidore Jackson, it was Quinn Williams that picked up the missing yards in the running game. We saw the 85 yards, good, hard, tough running. Great decisions every time they decided to run the option. Let's take a look at final stats here. And there you see it. A lot of yards today for Florida AM. and Bethune Cookman not typically giving up too much defensively, but you know they had some opportunities. And what about the job by Bethune Cookman's defense? Florida AM had 99 yards rushing at the half, ended up only rushing for another 21 yards there. They put the clamps down on the Rattlers running game. All right, well, let's take a look at the MEAC standings here. Bethune Cookman wins the MEAC this year in 2010, getting ready for the playoffs, and they go undefeated for the first time in their history since 84. Yeah, great job for them. What can you say? Very competitively balanced MEAC race in Florida A&M at 4-4. Four four. Now they're going to do the coach for a permanent head coach there. Earl Holmes is putting his hat in there. I think the team played spirited for him. That's one of the questions that we'll answer during the offseason. So congratulations to Bethune Cookman, winners today in the annual Florida Classic over Florida AM. And that was our HBCU postgame report brought to you by Lexus. Bethune Cookman heading to the playoffs, undefeated in the MAC. They win a 21 16, the final. Stay tuned next for a race story. That's it from Orlando for Jay Walker, Mike Corey, Bethune Cookman 21, Florida AM 16. Have a great weekend, everybody.